in the team tournament, the Ultimate Schmodown Team Tournament 2018. The theme is anarchy. 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 Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Tuesday, it's Collider Live, and we are live here at the Collider Studios in Burbank, California, as the uh, great pit boss Ken Knapsack would say. It's a long, long weekend live, and that beautiful, lovely voice (laughs) is Mr. Mark Ellis. Hello, sir. I like when Ken does the intro and he stretches out the Burbank, California. He goes, California! Yeah, he's got a flair for the dramatic, that Kenny. (laughs) He sure does. And joining us on the table today, she is back, she is ready, she is upset with herself, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, (laughs) Roxy Stryer. How did we do that whistle thing? (laughs) Which one of you did that before the show? I can't whistle at all. It was you? That's from the next host of Jeopardy himself, Mr. Josh McCuga. Hey, gentlemen, how are we? How are we? How are you? This weekend took it out of me, I'll tell you what. No, I'm just... Where'd you like go? These three day weekends are, they just feel longer. Right. Could you, you, you right. Because are you, you complaining about a three day weekend? Yeah. No, I mean, it yes. just, it, man, I just wish I could have gone back to work yesterday. <laughs> no, I, I do it, wish for that sometimes. Sometimes I, when you're like, oh, Monday, I'll drink on a Sunday. I mean, I know NFL is coming up, so I was going to drink anyway, but it's like, uh, it keeps going. I had a few pops That's last night. Old, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. I had a few pops watching Ozark last night. Oh, yeah. yeah. That show is good. It's got deep into me and some Miller Lite, got deep into Ozark. <laughs> and that's funny because you're normally not like, uh, I mean, there's certain shows that get you that you'll do that because it, cause, cause then you'll go right back to the ESPN. Yeah, I know. Well, the, like like The Affair, for instance. The, right. the Affair hooked me yeah. um, for a few episodes. I was like, man, this is just the best show ever. Right. And then I was like, and I'm done. And Are I you go done back already? To sports. Yeah. Are you finished? Where'd you finish? Well, I'm gonna t- let's talk about Ozark because I'll tell you, Ozark, <laughs> it definitely is Jason well, and Bateman. We're all at different places yeah. in the show. Yeah, yeah, so we're not going to spoil. No There's no spoilers for anybody. But worry. I am finishing this season. Like, uh, it's, it's damn good. Good, good, good. Because yeah. I think the other thing is to also kind of couple that with the fact that if you didn't know this already, TV Talk is back on Collider. Oh, it's, good. It, it, it has its own feed. You yes. can get it in Apple Podcasts or on Podcast One app if you're an Android user. But we're, we also, um, it'll be on the podcast YouTube channel where you can find clips of this show, obviously, too. But Josh and Thad are hosting. And, and the other thing on that feed, you'll be able to find, like, reviews. So me and you might do a review of, of Ozark with this done, or maybe we'll just kind of start talking about it where we are. Right sure. now, sure. So how, how you love the show's like I feel like a Breaking Bad. Like it, it's 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 um, it's the closest thing. It is besides it, Saul. It's Jason Bateman's. I think closer. Yeah. What was the other one? Oh, yeah, better right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's because it's, J- it's Jason Bateman's ba- Breaking Bad for sure. Yeah. What do you? Oh, th- I mean, it's um, it's one of the most intense but yet well done shows that you're never. I'm never bored. Yeah. Right. Like sometimes in and I, you know, I'll take it. Sometimes in shows like The Sopranos, I was bored in like the fourth and fifth seasons. Right. When they did standalones, this show has a ticking clock at all times. Yeah. And I love it. And each character that they introduce, it just makes sense. If you've ever spent time in that part of the world, it always feels like something shady's going on. And it really does. It really does. I've been to the Ozarks. My brother lived in Northwest Arkansas. There, it's like there is places there that you listen. We do so many shows. Like True Detective season two was in Los Angeles. We've seen Los Angeles. We know there's it's crime ridden, right? right? When you go to the Ozark, it's this beautiful lake ridden, and then now there's this cartel running drugs. It's I mean, there's shit going down. Yeah, Yeah. and I think that's and I think that you hit the nail on the head where it's the characters. All the characters are very interesting because sometimes with shows. That oh, so why are we following this person again? Right. Get me out! I mean, there are people on the show that I want gone, yeah. but that's because the characters themselves are so. Some of the characters are so despicable. For sure. Again, not ruining it for you guys. If you haven't seen season one, go and check that out. But season two so far, I'm only uh, well. I think what I say three or four episodes in. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Roxy, Ro- Roxy takes the cake. She's got nine. Yeah, nine. She's got yeah. One more to She's go. Got nine. I got so eight. It's <laughs> it's because of how amazing it is. I think another thing not to be understated. Josh and I have had this conversation about other shows that completely. Ruined ruins it for us uh the kids aren't annoying yeah which is 
key. I, no, like it's, the kids. It's, it's not Jurassic kids. Park yeah. kids. Yeah. Uh, and that is so essential, especially Sorry, with somebody as young as the youngest son. He's he's, he's a good. kid, but he's, he's really but, but good. But the next season that they do, they can't do uh, like it happens right afterwards because those kids already got older. Yeah, like, that, that, that yeah, kid, yeah, that yeah kid they shot up. Did. Yeah. They definitely <laughs> um, did. I don't even notice but, that. You know, shit. I was telling Makuga because Makuga's going to do this thing. <laughs> you didn't Mark's notice. Mark's too into Ozark. He's like, is he older? Right. Yeah. No. No idea. He's going to be like, yeah, he's going to be like thirty years old, and you're like, oh, I didn't notice. Both the kids are at least old enough to where you can relate to them because, like, one of the reasons why I love the show is I love thinking like what would I do in this situation because right. it's such a running game of Tetris where you're like I don't know how I'm going to get out of this one I don't know how I'm going to fit this piece into this piece and then whether they well manage said, to do Mark, it or they well manage said. to go back another way it's yeah. like it's just really fun to try to play along with it well that's why so Makuga and Thad are going to be starting a new thing on TV Talk where they just because I was ta- talking to him about it and I there's so much stuff to watch on streaming whether it's on Amazon or Netflix or wherever and there's Even so Hulu whatever it is right yeah. as, you, as you're going through I'm like, I don't know what's good. I'm out of touch with it. So yeah, it's a I, deluge. Sure. And when I go through, <laughs> well done. Well deluge. Done. Can you yeah. spell deluge? It's actually pronounced God bless you. deluge. Come on, try. Deluge? Deluge. Yeah. It's like a big. It's D-E-L-U-G-E. pronounced deluge. D E L U G E. That's what correct. Yeah. That's, That's right. what I said. It's an SAT oh, word. Is that what you said? Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And right. you're all pronouncing it. It's deluge. Deluge. I pronounced it for effect. <laughs> deluge. Deluge. It's like when I told my grandma to go to the store and pick me up a peanut grist yeah. so that she doesn't look at the wrong thing. He's working on it hard. Uh, Beardo, how hard is uh, Mark working on that word? <laughs> No, oh, he's so oh, come on, bro. Huh? I just trying to get him to set I, up the smooth. I think smooth it's a good setup for yeah. sound cues too yeah. early because I just I, I I I think in the control room there's a lot of buttons being pushed because we just started the show. Yeah, they got to cue up the fart noises for the second half of the program. <laughs> they got to get all the oh, other sound drops. That? You didn't and take like, that. Yeah. That's what I'm oh, saying is so that I think they're pretty frazzled around that. Yeah, it's fine. Beardo, it was, so it's it's kind of Monday for them. Yeah, because Beardo mm. has been on point with the sound clips, but you know he's you know. I oh, like so the smell of, of armpits. Okay, good. Cool. I'm, glad, I'm glad that you like the smell of armpits. Oh, good, good for you. Um, <laughs> he's no. so far back, they probably think he's saying it live now. <laughs> like, they can't see if his lips are no. moving or not. Ooh, right, just so randomly, good. he just has, like, a case of, like, Tourette's. So yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know what we... And this was, t- it was a huge weekend for two shows. It was. Jack Ryan, Jack Ryan also, and I watched yeah. the first episode of that, yeah. enjoyed it. And that's the conversation Makuga and I got into because yeah. the way that it works for me, I go and see a ton of movies for, at the screenings, and that's how I am. The, weekends, I'm not seeing movies. I just can't. Like mm-hmm. with, with two kids, it's, it's, it's tough to do. But at night, that's the time my wife and I get to spend time together. And we've got to be on the same page on the television. Otherwise, it oh, ain't yeah. happening. I ain't taking stuff down. So, uh, hey, Jason, smelling it has nothing to do with the fact that I don't like television. Dopey joke number 73 on the After Thoughts <laughs> uh-huh. show. It's the fact that it's hard for me to get to certain things. Once right? you like, get we married. Got, you you got to be on the same page. So like how does she feel about the Krasinski? So she she I mean she liked that but she really she loved Ozark season one so then we started watching season two oh, that was easy but like last night for example like I was I what I wanted to do my plan was to watch um, Ozark the, where we were then stop and then watch Upgrade because I haven't seen it right harder sell because then where we went Upgrade just came on the on demand I know that's where ooh, that's ooh, what ooh, I was going to do so instead good. of we'll look at John or John Krasinski's yeah. nipples we went to um, so. Then I had to compromise yeah. last night. So what we did was Jesus Christ, cheese and rice. Is that no. him and uh, Jack Ryan? No, that's him in thirteen hours. But he's God. just as ripped in Jack Ryan. Yeah. How do you not know this thirteen up. hours? Yeah. Well, that's why I was excited about Jack Ryan because because Krasinski's in it. He's obviously yeah. the best movie of two thousand or beyond. Thirteen hours. A and statement. I uh, want to see him do more action stuff like that. I just it. It's good. I like the first episode. Again, I can't. I can't talk about the rest. You watched the whole season. I did. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about because I know Thad watched it as well. And you're going to review it. We're going to well, review it also. We're going to. Well, we're going to talk about it heavily on TV Talk. No spoilers, but we probably will do a separate. Yeah, we should review. do a full episode. It's a full season breakdown of it. Yeah. But, um, but the way that we did for compromise, though, because that, that's what happened last yeah. night. We were going to watch Upgrade. And then what do I wind up doing? Wind up watching Ashley and Jared get, get proposed. He proposed to her on the beach. Yeah. And, you know, the funny thing about that, too, is that Jared's a baller, dude. <laughs> like, I got next time he's on the show, like, he because he's got that because he, he's a he's a charming dude, right? Is this so, Jared Haven? Jared Haven. Yeah. So he's he, on the, the current program? Well, no. Wait, so he was on. He, he came. I'll tell you. He came on the show. Uh, what was that? On, on last on, Wednesday. On Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. And he talked about, you know, he, he was talking. Were you on that episode? You were, no, no. No. But uh, what, what I'm asking is, is, is he currently on well, the tell, Bachelor? I'm, I'm about to tell you the answer. That's okay. the question. So he I told, thought that was like two years no, ago. It was. No, he told, he's not. No. He told the story. What happened was he. 
Thank you, Roxy. Great for the setup. Um, but we- he was getting upset. I didn't want him. I didn't want him. Yeah, to have to be a thing. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm gonna lead you on. So what happened is he 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 went through the whole thing on how he got her back and he realized that like he had messed up. She started dating somebody else, mm-hmm. and we we played the Hans Zimmer theme of time as he told the story. <laughs> I, I was crying. It was, in the yeah, and it was actually was crying. really emotional. Yeah, yeah. it was. Oh, and, it was kind of beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you, Bruno. And as he did, he and he and he grabbed her and he kissed her. Did this whole thing, right? Then he talked about how he proposed to her on Bachelor in Paradise. Mm-hmm. So he then they brought they, they show him last night, and Chris Harrison brings him in, and the boyfriend that she was dating at the time when he stole her is on the show. So he walks in, Kevin, and, and, right? Yes, that's his name. And Jared, Jared, is like the nicest guy in the world, right? But you can tell he he was he didn't he didn't he said it on the show. He didn't want to lose her, and he felt like someone took. His girl, so he was still back last night. He's telling this conversation, and the guy's looking at him. And he looks and he's like, Well, you know, at the time, she was in a relationship, and he points at the guy, and then he goes, And so was I. And then he, and then he takes her on the beach, and everyone's fawning all over the fact. Look at these two, they're getting their poses on the beach. And this poor bastard <laughs> is just, can you imagine watching your And he's Canadian, like another just I know, kick to the Canadian. But can you imagine team. this poor hump? I mean, I, I gotta tell you, like for me, I was thinking about it. And someone even said it on the show. It's like, yeah, it's not really normal to watch your uh, your ex get, you know, uh, Matt or proposed to right in front of your face. I'm already dude. confused as beach. to who actually got proposed. Ash, Jared, Jared proposed, proposed, proposed to Ashley, Ashley, proposed on, Ashley. on the Ashley. beach. Yeah, when she yeah. was dating somebody else, and so was he. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. That's yes. you just you, but that's you true. paved it over. Mark, let me hear. Let me give this to you. All real right, let's quick, hear it. Put okay? the music on now. Here, here, this here, is the, a deluge of information. A deluge. It's a cornucopia, if you will. Very <laughs> all over the place. Keynote. Let's hear how does this. So it's easy. Jared and Ashley <laughs> fell in love sort of on a Bachelor in Paradise yeah. a couple seasons ago. Yeah. Then she went and did this Winter Games show. She started dating this Canadian. Okay. He went on vacation with Ashley I and the, the Jade and her, his wife We're losing or whatever. It. You're losing <laughs> it. He fell back in love with Ashley I. They got back together. He proposed to her on Bachelor in Paradise. Okay. Okay. Back in love. He okay. never in front of the Canadian place. that she was so once watching. Ellis so learn this the guy, is amazing. Kevin, so is watching the one a dog learn a new trick. What's that? I thought Jared yeah, had Kevin to watch had to somebody watch. else. No, Kevin had to watch. Jared did the proposal. Good. Okay. Because I knew Jared had proposed to her. That's what I'm just saying. It was the way that Jared did. The only one who is answering your questions. Yeah. Is that accurate? I think they're all giving a game <laughs> yeah. effort, and but I don't think anybody's doing a great job. Doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? The point is, yeah. the, the point is that like that. That's what that was the. You're an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, me. Beardo. As soon as you said yourself. Ashley, yeah. I I was like, wait, are there other Ashleys? I got to be concerned no, about it's here. The Ashley. And then my point. Uh, God. Anyway, point yeah, is that's tough. the show. That's the show that I watch for two different reasons. You poor One, miserable bastard. No, listen, th- that, that show's a train wreck, and I like watch it. But the other reason was because I wanted to see how he did it. Because he told this whole story, mm-hmm. and it was just the way that he he just. Again, just like pointed at the guy, like, yeah, she was in a relationship. Sorry, pal. And then, and then said, oh yeah, by the way, I'm gonna go propose on the beach. She was with some douche here from Canada, and right. I'm, you know, Poor like, guy. kind of just threw him right under the that was Canadian. So, so that was my night. The old last Zamboni, night. if you will. Yeah, yeah, Roxy, why do you annoy yourself? Oh my god, you annoy yourself. You say all, all the, the time. time. Like I, I just will do something, and I'll be like, shut the fuck up, Roxy. Do you shut talk to the yourself? fuck up. Yeah, oh, you guys not? Yeah, I think sometimes I you talk have to. to myself. I I have an unusual amount of time that is devoted uh, with announcers in my head, <laughs> commenting on my day. And oh. That is not a lie at all. Like yes, yes, every single day. And like this morning, I came in here and I was sitting here and I'm like trying to take pictures of people, and I'm like, this is an annoying quality that you have. Like if they wanted to be in the fucking picture. They would say, I want to be in the picture. Oh, that's an insecurity. And, well, n- no, but it's for everything. Like, it, I'm so annoying with shit. Like, my, as the resident Jew over here. <laughs> Well, maybe. They, well, that's actually true. We like lay the guilt trip on our very annoying people. But like my siblings say it to me all the time. They're like, "You're the most annoying person that ever lived." And I'm like, "I am a very I've met annoying, way more yeah, annoying." Like, I don't people. know. Yeah, I'm annoying too. as shit. Like, I could. I could. I'm relentless. Like I just don't let things go. And like I just. Yeah, I think that's why you're successful. I'll say this. I met. I met your brother. At uh, He's less New York Comic Con, uh, you're less annoying than your brother. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. and your brother, brother, nice shit. guy. What? Brother's yeah. a nice guy. Why is the brother annoying? I'm not, I didn't say he was annoying. Well, you did though. Kind I of. said Roxy's less annoying. Well, but you, but then so saying he's annoying. <laughs> he's on the annoying there's, spectrum. There's, a, there's no. a shade more of annoying than he I is. I think he's annoying right. too. Right, right. But I'm saying Roxy is one of the least annoying people. I right, know. but he's so a little more annoying. He's a normal level of annoying. Okay, so what's mm. level annoying? 
Um, a normal level of annoying is just really existing as a human because I get easily bugged by people okay. that are around. But like you know, you go to like events or like you're hanging out at a studio and you're like, oh god, this person again. You know, it's and amazing we've survived sure. this long as friends. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but but Roxy, I've never had, I've never been like, man, Roxy is really yeah, annoying. I, mean, I, I haven't felt that either. Yeah. Uh, would yeah. you say if you? I feel like you would, would say actually. Yes, I yeah. wouldn't text you, or I, we, we wouldn't have you on this show if you were. No, that's why I said to you before like, we were talking about. So, Roxy, can I say where you're going? I can't say where you're going. Yeah, yeah. You so, can say. so, Roxy's going to the um, the, Fre- well, the Freddie Mercury, the Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rhapsody junket. junket yeah. And Ooh, she's when's just, that? Well, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. So old chicklick teeth mallet. You see in the yeah. movie? It, okay, no, which is weird, right? And not necessarily. They're showing us thirty minutes of footage. That's cool. Yeah, but I know people who have seen it, so I know it's done, and I heard it's great. Yeah? <laughs> Look at this four-year-old. On frame, Mark, right? I put these teeth in my mouth <laughs> for a not, movie. You are a horrible human. <laughs> That's, uh, they uh, they why didn't need to do the teeth why for the did, movie. Why did they but, cast Rami over you? I'm confused. I know. Oh, no. What did they do? I could <laughs> sing Roman. <laughs> you you seem like you should have been the original Mary Poppins with that accent. <laughs> Jack Hunter's uh, going to come in here and wreck <laughs> shit up. Yeah, well, listen. So Was he trying to be British? I couldn't even tell. No. Oh, yeah, you don't know what I can do. That's right. That you're, sounded, like, felt racist. Something. Your impression of a British person sounds like you're trying to lick peanut butter from the roof of your mouth. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm doing the I'm doing the Rami Malik British. You just started with an actual bad British yeah. accent where they were there. Well, really I can bad. do whatever the right, fuck I want. Let me, let me, let me, like let me tell this. Well, let me tell this. So you were going to um, you're going to this thing, Bohemian Rhapsody, and she was worried because she doesn't know a lot of people that she's going to be going mm-hmm. on the thing with. And, and by I, not a lot, not no of, one. None of the people. And when you go to these junkets, sometimes you can get. It depends if you're going with the influencers or sometimes you get some of the press people that they have that kind of clicks and they don't want to talk to new people and I, I, I dealt with yeah, this shit yeah I've been there before. Yeah, it happens and I say good No, what I, what I, I don't t- want to talk to you either that's, that's an old <laughs> I'm man I'm going to sit in the corner and play words with friends oh yeah friggin yeah do you still yeah. play that yeah all the time huh. but listen so the thing is what I told Ooh. her I said I said, and this goes back to the annoying conversation I don't think it was annoying but I said don't be too cool Roxy from 2014 yeah. be 2018 Roxy <laughs> What, what did she do in 2014? We've had this conversation about yeah, this. Yeah, it just was a different cat. Like, I, then to her I, own words, she really said she was a dick. Have, yeah, I was more of a dick and like really wouldn't have cared if anybody disliked me. But like, here's the deal. The the truth of the matter is they're flying me there on a private jet with the rest of the people. Oh, it's not in town. No, it's in Vegas. Okay. Like, they're putting me up at MGM. I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of rooms. <laughs> so come find me. The MGM yeah. owns um, multiple uh, right. hotels and casinos. Right. They're like doing a whole meet and greet with with um, Adam Lambert and with Brian oh, cool. May and with Roger and they're doing really? like a whole show Really? You get to meet like us. the actual guys yeah, in Queens? Like That's pretty They're awesome. like really going for it and they're, they're doing, doing all the things. Yeah, they're uh, doing a show. Oh, shit. And, and we're yeah. doing the junket so it's like the fact that I'm even sitting here being like kind of a dickhead about yeah. it, like just uh, I don't know if I'm going to be friends with anybody. If anybody's right. going to like that's me. annoying. Yeah, that's, that's annoying. annoying. That's, that's annoying. annoying. Hot damn! Like, who cares about the journalist you're with? You, yeah. You're going to get to you're get, you might get to shake the hand of one of the great guitar players that ever lived. Uh, yeah, and he's I, also an astrophysicist. Uh, is hey, I've learned through my research. Oh, yeah. The, like, two of them have doctorates. Like, Brian May writes books on black holes and yes. the technology that we might be able to use to pioneer our way through wow. a black hole. It's and he also wrote the riff for Tie Your Mother Down. I the guy that. knows how to I do I love stuff. the trailer. I think the movie looks phenomenal. Yeah. Again, looks when amazing. You, when you hear that, when everything you just set up, who gives a shit if you don't see the movie yet? You get to watch 20, You get to watch a concert. That's great. I just want to see the movie because usually you guys know when you're going to these things and you don't get to see the movie and there's so many bells and whistles, yeah. you kind of like raise an eyebrow and you think, why are they trying to impress us so much without showing us the film? But I've, I know people who I trust who have seen the movie who say it's Awesome. I see. I I, uh, I could have gone without seeing Pawn Sacrifice before the Tobey Maguire interview, but you know. I liked Pawn Sacrifice. You didn't like Pawn Sacrifice? Uh, no, I'm saying based on my junket interview. Oh, based with on him. the interview. I 100% agree with McCoog yeah. on this one. Is yeah. it? I, I enjoyed Pawn Sacrifice yeah. as well. I'm sure I'll love Bohemian Rhapsody. I've done a handful of junket interviews in my life. Uh, never saw any of the thing that even if they sent stuff like I did some Westworld prep uh, when I did the Westworld ones. But like you can go in there and fly blind. If some some, some of, people can. Some people can. That's that's the problem. I think, okay, okay, I'll are put you it this saying way. I'm not? I, some? No, I think Roxy's no, one can. of the people I that's going to be able to pull I it off. Do. Here's the thing, though, because the publicists get pissy at you. Yeah. When, because that was the whole thing. Like last week when Chris White's came in, like you know he he hadn't seen. Uh, I mean, I hadn't seen uh, the movie yet, right? That's so, the Rogue One. No, 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 no. The uh, Operation the, Finale. Uh, yeah. Operation Finale. Yeah. Destination Finale. No, and Perry got a chance to see it, you know, and so that's why you know Perry came in real quick, asked a couple things about. 
the movie, and I wanted to talk more about him and his career and stuff too. Right. Um, but I didn't see it, and I could still the same thing, you know. There and when I did my Force Awakens junket, they didn't let us see the movie, and you know that I can that every everything that I did. It was, yeah, there's there's there are a lot of people that can do it. There's a lot of people that cannot do it because they don't know what to talk about. Because my biggest problem with people at junkets, they ask a lot the same of times, four questions. They ask the same four questions, but they what never, was but, it like working but, with? Yes, yes, but they never listen. That's the thing that drives me oh, crazy. Yeah. I hate interviews, and I see like it all the time. Like, ask a follow-up question. But it's, yeah, it's either ask a follow-up question or listen. Like, this is the one thing I hate. Like, if I say some... More, uh, so, uh, what, did, what did you like about working with Josh McGoogle last week? Oh, Josh is... Uh, the dedication that he brings to his craft and the way that we emotionally connected with each other in the love scenes was something that I didn't know I had inside of me. Definitely, definitely. So um, tell me about where you grew up. <laughs> it's like, it's uh, like you don't even listen. It's like definitely, definitely. They, they, yeah. Absolutely, sure, sure. Yeah. They're not listening. They're listening to the next question. When, when you should Thank be you. like, and so those love scenes, are those going to translate into real life? Well, like, yeah, whatever it is. It's like, I think I understand you only get like yeah. three or four. I, I kind of want to like, be, I, I want to get more in depth into my on-set experience. With Josh, with Macubi, but you yeah. get like three or four minutes, and, I, and that's tough, right? You have just so Yeah, you got to go. Go, go, you go. gotta go, but it's like the thing. That's why I don't like to do them because I like to have the conversations, like listen to them and have the you know mm -hmm. be able to do those follow ups. And sometimes, if you set up, and that's the thing people don't realize, when you set up like a big question that let's say it takes 35, 40 seconds to set up this whole big interview or this big question, and then a lot of times, if you depend on who you get, they can answer and it take them like two and a half minutes, oh, and boy, then that's yeah. it, and then you're done. So it's it, I understand like you know you want to get those questions, especially if whatever outlet you're working for. It's like okay, well we need you to get, make sure you cover this, make sure you do that. It, I would much rather someone just sit down and they just talk, and we can just hear. You know, I mean, I, I thought definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. First of all, Mark, um, I want to thank you for your kind words about my performance. Yeah, and uh, how did you get in here? Uh, <laughs> two still here. Nice. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, you You're know, not the main. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, when I would do like the rapid fire, when I did the rapid fire with Rene Russo and Jake Gyllenhaal, that was super fun. Yeah, right. And you do those, but then you go into situations where you're outside the room, uh, a la the Tobey Maguire. I know that's like a nine thousandth time callback when the publicist says, "Don't ask any questions about this, 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 right. this, 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 mm -hmm. this." Right. And then you're like, "Well, I'm out of questions. I'll go ask him if he researched a two year old's birthday party in order to get into the role of Bobby Fischer." <laughs> right. And then then you see a full you know meltdown. Tr yeah, just meltdown. Whatever. Yeah, but there is, you know, the ju you're right. The junket, you have people that you want to suffice with these sound bites. You never get them, right. and then the star talks for two and a half hours about what shoes he wore in Jack. Two and a half Ryan. minutes, and then the interview's over. Whatever. And that's yeah. and that's that's there are certain things to get. There are certain fun, like, and I use this stuff for the John Boyega thing. I, mm -hmm. we, I walked in when I saw Boyega, and he's like, "I'm a big fan of of movie talk." I was like, "Great!" And we started talking, and I asked about Jedi Council. Had a nice little rapport with him back and forth. Still has never come on the show. Wonderful. <laughs> and then we, but then it was just, it was easier to just, I like to go off book because I think that it's more interesting for the audience. Like, because the, the audience, if you notice, a lot of times, audience doesn't give a fuck about the generic no. interviews. And like, they put, like, it's, they don't this, watch isn't, them. this isn't Access Hollywood from fucking 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's a different thing to where you see these videos. Like, there's, I like when, when Perry goes and plays the game, sometimes with like the Would You Rather games. Sure. I mean, that's fun because you get to see the personalities of the people that she's interviewing. Like, that to me, that, that's fun. As opposed to the shit that Roxy was talking about, too, where it's like, so, was it fun to work with so and so? The, ha, tell me about the process of this. What was your audition like? And it's like, it just depends. If that stuff comes up, you know, just organically and inside of the conversation, that's fine. Definitely, right. definitely. Definitely, definitely. Right. That's what I mean. It's like, <laughs> it, dude, I can't even tell you how that happens all the time. I've seen people interview Schmodown players, and it's the same thing. It's definitely, like not, definitely, 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 definitely. Sure, sure. And they're just trying to get to their next question. <laughs> it's like, just listen. Well, it speaks to a larger thing that Roxy's panicked about. And, and I just want to, because there, there's multiple ways to do like a travel work situation where you either like try to bond with some people and like have some friends to hang out with, or you're just able to be that lone wolf so it seems like you're a little concerned about just being by yourself like the last kid picked at dodgeball and i gotta tell you it's the best feeling in the world is just to be by yourself yeah. and not worry about all these other professional people you walk in so you think i try to make no friends regardless so he, this is the worst advice to take <laughs> if the opportunity presents itself it's like yes. gandalf locked in a cage <laughs> but don't feel bad. what is that has nothing to do with anything it is. but just don't feel bad 
if if like it, it, you're just kind of sitting there and other people are clicks and trying to wedge yourself into a conversation because at the end of the day look here's here's the here's what I live by okay I live by two truths one is that when I walk into a room I think I'm the coolest guy in the room and the other truth is that I'm smart enough to realize that's not true right <laughs> yeah see but so so you, so you don't want to have any conversations I thought that was with anybody. going somewhere totally it different was. but I I think that is horrend- <laughs> I think it's horrendous advice. I think that you should absolutely open yourself up to meeting some new people. Now, there are going to be some asshole people that, that are there. It's just part of it. Like, again, I love the Joe Rogan quote to where he says, like, because he's talking about internet quotes. And he's like, when you're, at, when you're in, a, in a room of comedy and there's 100, 200 people there, you know by process of elimination, someone in that room is an asshole. Right. right? It's, just, it's, just yeah. the way, it's just the way it is. Now, there's going to be some people who think they're better. There's going to be maybe, maybe you're lucky and everybody's nice. Probably not. But there will be some cool people there. I, I when I when I was on the uh, Ant Man junket, uh, I hung out with this dude Spencer the whole time. Never met the guy before too, and it turned out to be one of the nicest dudes in the world. Every dude's and he was name on the is show, Spencer. Was on but this dude was on. He was on. He was on Schmoes a couple years ago. Um, but just a good dude. Eric Eisenberg I met during that time too. Really good dude. So there are, and I still ha- and he still have a relationship. With, Drew McQueenie was another guy I met on that thing. So there's there's a lot of different people that you yeah. can meet and continue relationships. When we with did the CIA them. training and it, we like. There were, it was pretty fun because most of the people we were with that time were pretty good dudes yeah. and ladies. But yeah, there was you a point can be when, open to when it. Mark and I yeah. were like, we're just going to be at the bar. Yeah. So there you can. It's a oh yeah, take. remember that? Yeah. I'm not going to say who it was, but we're walking back to the hotel room after a long night at the bar, and we hear uh, a couple having sex. Let's just say may or may not have been on our trip. Yes. And it was the funniest thing. <laughs> we were oh, outside no. the door. Oh, we were dying like, They were not a couple before that. No, no, no. no they, they were. Oh, it was him and his yeah. girlfriend. We, so we got like five of us. Like, hey, you got to listen to this. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Oh god. <laughs> it sounded like, like Peter that, Griffin. Is that the girl or the guy? That was. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. so were they from oh, Boston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, fuck you. Yeah. Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> was it me? Uh, that's, that would be annoying. Oh, uh, uh, definitely. Definitely. Keep wanna, it going. Right. They're practicing their questions for the next day. <laughs> I want to move on a little bit here, too. First of all, to let you guys know, um, to get you guys involved, hashtag Collider Live for the Twitter questions. And I, Copster, I think that do we did you already reach out to all the winners for... Uh, we have the three winners. We're just trying to figure out how to reach out to them. Oh, okay. Their names on their on the actual, you know, their username oh, the iTunes stuff. So do you have a Do you have a screenshot of those? You, you or, uh, if you give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'd like you to read those comments that you chose. And sure. Then, and then, so take take your uh, take your time. And let me know when you can. Okay. Sure. So we gave away three Infinity War Blu-ray. For all you have to do is yep. go to Apple Podcasts. We'll do another contest like this for sure. But go to Apple Podcasts and they uh, wrote a, a review for the show. It already the show's doing well on Apple Podcasts. It just came out like two weeks ago, so there's already a bunch of you guys. I think um, I don't know, something like between ten and 12,000 subscribers already on that feed. Crushing we're, it. Nice. We're crushing so we're doing okay there. So there's that, um, and then we want to get you guys involved. And to let everyone else know, the last live event for a while is going to be on September 8th, and it is coming up on this Saturday, Dan Merle and John Roca against Winston Marshall and Stacey Howard in the first match of Anarchy. And then the main event, Jason Inman defends his Inner Geekdom Championship against Mara Kanopic for the belt. Going to have a lot of competitors out there. There are, as of today, 280 tickets sold. We have about 20 left. El Portal Theater, 7 p.m. kickoff time. Get there early. Get your tickets now before it sells out, which it will do. And I'm flying back from Toronto on Saturday. Crazy. Then I'm going to do the show. And then I'm going to get a red eye. Yeah, SchmodownLive.com. Roxy will be there. Josh McCougal will be there. Um, come on out and the say hi. The Wild Berries are uh, warming up the crowd yep. before. you. I mean, you're flying in just for the Wild Berries. Had a, guy, had a guy at the show this weekend in Atlanta. Thanks to everybody who came out, by the way. It was a great, great time at Relapse Theater. Uh, packed the place. Had yep. a had a Wild Berry shirt. Yep. Oh, yeah. Had a Wild Berry well, shirt. So we'll be giving away t-shirts. And, we put, and Brianne Chandler will also be there. And she's going to be giving away a lot of stuff. There is a giveaway for a green room visit. Um, there's a lot of cool things that we're going to be giving away there, too. And there's going to be some theatrics and some shenanigans. So make Make sure Tom Foolery, Tom perhaps? Foolery, to make sure that you guys, again, like I said, last one. So come and check it out. The guy that posted, I, I don't know if that was on Facebook, but I think I saw you post it on Instagram. I'm yeah, kidding, yeah, yeah. Uh, That was talking about how his family watches the, oh, the, so the Schmodown. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. hysterical. And he said, my son wanted the Wild Berries for his birthday. And he was like, no. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to have him do, do an actual, he wanted the Wild Berries to do his birthday party, come out and fly out for, for the birthday party. How like, would be amazing? What's the fee? I can't imagine Josh and Elliot are like out of, out of, out of 
right. range. Oh, it wasn't a matter of it being out of range for financially. He wanted nothing to do with them at the party. He, I'll get, yeah, I yeah. can tie balloons. I can dance oh, on the dance floor. I, yeah. I can make animal balloons. Yeah, me too. I wonder what the other kids of the party would think if they're not familiar Shmodown with the Schmodown. Like, like, would they think if Just you get Josh, too loud yeah. guys get Josh and Elliot in full clown costumes together I would love and we that. could have like a clown He'd fight. He'd scare himself though when he looked in the mirror. Yeah, yeah that's a yeah, great point. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um but this, this post by this family was something incredible. It's really cool. It was really, I posted it on my Instagram, you can check yeah. it out, but it's just the it, what what the Schmodown kind of meant for sure. them, what the Shire Wolves meant to them as far as competitors and my well our dream was always to kind of turn this thing into a sport. And I love the fact that competitors have, have felt that way. I love that the the fans are starting to feel that way. So come and check it out on September eighth. It really it, it's something different live. I, last one of the year. I would love to do it. Last one for a while. It's so the, it's a Wild yeah. Bears audition for any birthday parties in the Southern yeah. California area. Yeah. So <laughs> I also want to move on. There's a lot of or shit that happened in the news um, in general here. A lot of movie news, TV news, uh, news in general. Cops are going to be thinking, because Mark riley has got the shits, so we're going to be... Um, <laughs> Did he oh, eat he not have the shits? He's was pooping he a lot. Did he, yeah. he ate at Chili's? No, I think he got the, he's got the flu or something. I was telling some friends oh. the Chili's story of Mark Riley, the tragedy of Mark yeah. Riley at Chili's this weekend. They were just dying laughing. Yeah. It's it's past the uh, the statute of limitations where it's no, not funny. It was funny the what day it? after it happened. pretty damn funny. He, he ate he, at Chili's and almost died. Yeah, he almost died, but he's he got, almost he, died. He got, he's got serious... Like, Who gets he's got, sick more he's often, got, Dennis or Mark Riley? Uh, different. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis walks by a hospital and gets sick. Um, like it's, <laughs> it's like it, yeah. Dennis gets sick all the time. Yeah. Uh, Riley gets sick because he's got some. You know, he's, he's he def- Riley has bowels, some medical, bowels. legit medical issues. Yeah, and some, I just, we should not be making light of it. But no, in no, no, the no. Face of comedy, you know. He, and it's funny. It's yeah. Funny. And well, he was at he he was there and something happened with Chili and he went off on oh, Chili's man. on Schmoes. It was amazing. It was good. Was a great Does he rant. still eat there? No, I can't do it. It was the one near After Bus, really? like the, the, the one the old studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hasn't stopped me. I I can't I can't do it anymore. I stopped. I boycotted it. I stopped. Mm. It. Spe- well, good for you. Oh. Spe- there you go. Oh. Speaking of boycotts, what a segue like that. Well done. This is a stupid story. I got to be honest with you. It's a really stupid story, and I have a lot of friends who are guilty of this too. When, when uh, I don't know, last week we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but In and Out, which is a popular, uh, f- obviously burger franchise, that's what a hamburger's all about. Is that In and Out? Yeah. Wow, I hear nice. that all the time. It's like Queen all over again. Yeah. Um, did you know about this on the East Coast? Have you ever out? heard no, no, no. It's, it's a West Coast thing. Yeah. The first time I heard about it was through Swingers. swingers. Yeah. Yeah. Batman's got the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, and I, you know, the funny thing is I never really got into In N Out um, until my wife was, she she's grew up here, you know. So mm-hmm. we went and I get the double double animal style. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my thing. It's a good burger. Love it. Horrible fries. Yeah, the fries Comple- are completely great. agree. Yeah, fries worst, fries. worst effing fries. They taste like yeah, they're actual they're, potatoes. I can't agree, and I can't disagree. It's they're not the they're just fine. Compared they're, to McDonald's yeah. in, or uh, Jack in the Box yeah. or uh, even Burger King, no, 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 it's no, no, no. despicable. All right, but Shake me, Shack has the best French yeah, fries. Really? Shake Shack has very good I fries. Can't, I can't deal with it. I gotta go. Fries. And that's the only one I do now. I used to do Carl's Jr. I, I don't. The only time McDonald's I do is if I'm at the airport. I get the two cheeseburgers. I fire it down, and that's about it. But this. So last week. They find out that In and Out or whoever one of the one of the chains one of the stores in in California donated uh, like twenty five thousand to the GLP, right? So everyone to went, the Republican National Fund, the everyone, RNC. Uh, everyone went shit house, and and then we're boycott. We're boycotting. Well, then you got to start boycotting everything <laughs> because there's people. Uh, you're gonna boycott Disney. You're gonna boycott. I mean, there's people that on on both sides. Also, and they're also too, they also donated. It's stuff a Christian. For, it's a Christian organization. It, they're very right wing. It, it's that. It's it their, specifically uh, to yeah. not just to the party. It was specifically to the um, immigration. Correct. Or I don't I think it was. Up? I think it was. I think it was just to the RNC. It's a double, but like my point, like the thing was, if that was, I mean, double check on that. But from what I what I was told was, it was just a donation, right? That they're making to the RNC. To me, it's like you. It's politically. I'm not going. I'm not going in and out for for politics. I'm going to eat a fucking burger. And I, if, if that's your politics, your politics. Now, there's a difference though when it's like if it is donated to like hate stuff. And right. if, if we like find Chick-fil-A? out. Like, if well, if it's if you start donating to like if, if if you find out like there's white supremacists that that they're donating to, then it's like no thanks. Yeah. Then I'm boycotting you, fucking sure. ass. But it, I think it's a dangerous thing we run into if we st- if if people. Well, know, do we boycott people that donate to the uh, to the DNC then too? I mean, because listen, does. 
do are we right wing people? No. Am I left wing? No. I'm I'm in the middle. Yeah. I, like I like to listen to the point, and I agree. And I, it's all in moderation. That's why we got rid of the super size because people were dying. And and I got to be honest with you, I disagree with that. The super size was a great thing. Yeah. But <laughs> got a big laugh on the other side. Hey, of the that was the biggest yeah, laugh of the whole laugh. episode. That's yeah. good. But and that's the that's the problem with when you go to extremes of things. Like everybody's like McDonald's is going to kill you. Yeah, if you ate McDonald's every day like Morgan Spurlock, you would be unhealthy. If that, that's the y- right, you can't moderation. <clears throat> yeah, well, if we would just as a people get well, together. That's, that's a bigger story, brother. I mean, that is a, a longer conversation that you have to do because I th- I'm telling you, when you have, it's just looking at this story and seeing people like lose their minds over this stuff. And the real reason behind it is because it's not a matter of the RNC. It's a matter of what they see is people hate Trump. A lot of people. Right. right? So you see that and you go, well, that's what you're donating to. But it's not. It's that's who the leader is right now. They are allowed to donate to whoever the fuck they want to. As and I think the other side of that too is that from I think there's other parts, there's other chains that of In and Out that donate to the DNC. And I think so. And I think that's why originally whoever that called out for that boycott then pulled back on it. So there's no boycott. It was a stupid story, and it was dopey. And I think you get dangerous sometimes when, when you when you get there into are this. some there are some restaurants or like things that exist in the yeah. ether that I would consider boycotting. Uh, I did like I think I told the story. Uh, like I deleted the Uber app because I was pissed off because the guy like the head of Uber like can't, he had something about uh, when when families were initially being asked to leave and then it was like he was a Trump supporter and I'm like fuck you Uber goodbye and then two days later I'm drunk and I'm like well I gotta get home. Right, you know, when I lift, why don't you go to lift? Right, I uh, don't have an account. I, I, Too lazy. I, I, it's just it's Uber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I dropped Uber. Cheaper. That's I'm the familiar bigger with problem. Uber, uh, and a New Balance shoes. Uh, their head donated to Trump, and I'm like, I'm not using your 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 sneaker. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna buy New Balance. But you just made you just made the point. <laughs> I think that's us in general society. Everybody stomps their feet. And, I'm not. Gonna do that anymore, and then they, and then because the people are they're too lazy or whatever, it's like, ah, it's fine. It's very reactionary. Yeah, it's very reactionary. But even like, calling for a boycott is like reactionary. I, it's reactionary, but it's also like, are you actually gonna boycott? No. no. And, and that was what I got pissed off at when people were saying they're boycotting Solo, and that's why the numbers were so low. Right. Nobody looked at Solo and is like, I'm not gonna go because that's not my Han Solo. They just didn't want to see the movie. Right. There's a difference between not wanting to see the movie and like being outside with signs. But why can't people just live? <laughs> You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm so. I'm. It, it, it's, we need something. He's on both about. sides of it too, because, like you said, Josh, it's the same thing. I, I'm. I. There are certain things that I lean on towards. And again, this is not one of these big conversations. I'm not doing a whole political thing too. But I, if you follow me on Twitter, you know my stance on gun control. That's one thing. If you want to call me a left side on that, fine. There are other sure. things I think I'm very right, right wing about. There are a lot of things that I'm kind of like you said in the middle about. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but I just think that right now we're at a place. Where it is an explosion of like, there's either your opinion or my opinion. There's no way you're going to convince me of, of right. anything else. No matter what you say, I'm going to scream out on Facebook about it. And if you if you agree with me, you can still be my friend. But if you have one comment against me, I'm going to delete you as my friend. And because you can't because you cannot be you because you cannot convince me. And I'm talking about both sides. That's here, the too. attitude I want 100%. you to have this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going in with that. I mean, they're doing this. You know, this this documentary on Jane Fonda. Right. Oh, nice. Robert. Jane Fonda in, yeah. in five acts. And, you know, she was she was very active in a in a, a vehicle for political Vietnam change stuff, and a lot yeah. of things in Vietnam. Right. Uh, but there are there are two sides of every story and you can look at it however you want to look at certain things. But if we don't have like an open dialogue about certain stuff, right, like y'all can't take my guns because I need them. But there's also people that are shooting up schools, so we but have a to do something. Saying, we, we're open in the store. Then the thing is, that's that's my biggest issue with it too, because I don't think that you should take people's guns away. I think that there should be modifications on that, and I think that right away people say that. Right. I think a lot of people think that they go, they're just trying to take our guns away, which is not that, the road that I'm going down at all. Because there are certain things. Again, there are certain, there are a lot of responsible hunters. There are a lot of responsible people. There are certain, there's just certain things that I don't think that we necessarily need, like. W- things that we should do with mental checks and right away the stomp the stomp is well they're trying to take our guns away no one's trying to take your guns yeah away. no one's so, trying to ban no. guns because it's, it's never going to happen. happen the happen. question is like you just want your leaders to act more responsibly to be right. open to the conversation as opposed to every time there is a shooting have them immediately come out and say okay now's not the time to talk about it always this is. let's just let, 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 let's fix this and then we'll hopefully everybody forget right. about it it's like no just have the conversation but that's my that's my thing though guarantee right now I'll, I'll put millions of dollars on it that in the YouTube chat right We're now yeah, sure. no, 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 but, I, no, but, my, but my point is right now there's people that are commenting about it too and what I'm saying is 
our stance right now in there, no matter what, no matter what, even if I, we say that we're not trying to, you know, these motherfuckers trying to take our guns, they're still saying the same thing. And then the same point on the other side, that, that extreme left side, who just doesn't hear it and just thinks they're right or it's just a bunch of racist fucking morons. And it's not the case because there are a lot of people on the right side that are very responsible, very, uh, you know, that, that want the, the good of the country. There is. It's, it's, both, it's both sides. Roxy, you're going to lose your mind. I just fucking hate everyone. <laughs> like all of the people, I don't. Everyone. I don't get it. Fuck I, off. Yeah, fuck off. Fuck off. Like for fifteen different. You do reasons, talk to yourself. Going, well, going back. I don't think it's stupid that people are boycotting. I don't think it's stupid. I think that it's people's right. Am I going to boycott? No, because I think I have better uses of my time. I really like In-N-Out, so I'm not going to boycott. Right. But if people want to boycott, I don't give a shit if you eat your In-N-Out burgers or not. I don't care. So it's not stupid. It's just do whatever you want to do. That's living your life, not telling yeah. people it's stupid to do that. And then when it comes to gun reform, I, I, I don't know how many times I can have this conversation with people. I think... What everybody agrees what we're doing now isn't working. Right. So let's fucking try something else. Yeah. Let's try something else. The uh, chat room is still see um, if that works. Uh, chat room is still uh, working on burgers mostly. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> the things that really <laughs> matter yeah. in life. But, uh, burgers. It, here's the other thing though too is that I see a lot of people when they're talking about Colin Kaepernick and they're like, right. oh well, uh, uh, like look at how stupid people are going out and buying Nike just so you can burn it, which is dumb that because is you're still giving money to. Money, yeah. But a lot of people. Already own Nike shit. Yeah. So if you're taking the Nike shit that you had previously bought, and then and then you're doing that to make a statement, but it's been going as far back as like I remember my dad telling me about when people were burning Beatles albums because John Lennon said the Beatles are are bigger than Jesus, and people were like fuck the Beatles. Right. And then Jesus a, was a, a Jew. A couple weeks later, they're like, eh, the Beatles are really good. Right. Should probably buy that record again. You know, like I just don't. It's I, reaction. You said it's reactionary. It, it, it's reactionary, and Look. I don't mind it if you're trying to if you're trying to make a point. The, I don't. It's just like, no, it's, going back to the cap. Thing, right? This is an overall divide in it in general, right? Because I can't remember who the, I believe it was a senator that's running. I can't remember where. I just saw this whole video on his point I love. And I thought what it was is the fact that, because someone asked him about Kaepernick and, and, right. and the NFL players and how he felt if it was unpatriotic. And he said, even though, and he said he actually thought the opposite, that if you look at it, it's, it's patriotic in what he, the purpose of what he's trying to do. Right. The purpose is that he's, he wants to make a change. It's a protest. Yes. Right. And so, again, I was just talking to Comster about this, too, is that I can understand where the military, if you're in the military, it's a sensitive thing because, hey, this what you're doing right now, this is kind of going against what we're trying to do, and what we're fighting for. And I'm not telling you, you have to agree or you don't have to agree with what he's doing, but it is his right to do it, it as an that's American, that's literally what they're fighting for. Is, yeah, is his it's, right it's, to it's his freedom do to do it. it. Yeah. Now, and, and again, like I, I'm, I won't lie that when he does, when and all the players do it, I go, oh, man, it's during the national anthem, and I feel, and I'm like, I wish that they weren't doing it, but I understand why they're doing it. And yeah. I understand why they're doing it, and I think that for the, I and I again, like I said, I inside of me as I'm watching the game, I'm going, is there another way that they can protest the thing? And and to them, no, it's not. This is the way they want to protest it, and they have the right as Americans to do so. And the other reason, why, and the thing is with Kaepernick, with Nike, and everything that he's kind of going on with, with Nike is that what, what do they want? What do they want then? If he's not playing football and he can't get a gig, right? Do they want him never to work ever again? Because he, because that's that's basically what they're saying. Yes, they, oh, no, that is what they want. That's what I'm they're saying. Sure. So no matter where he goes, they're going to go. No, I'm going to boycott that now. See, I'm going to. Okay, I, I, and we kind of, I disagree with. A little bit about the Colin Kaepernick situation in the sense of, by all means, protest. If, if you are going to make a change, if you are protesting and, and going about making a change, great. And everybody has – the, this country is based on freedom and freedom of speech and doing what you want uh, in order to hopefully get a better result of something. As far as Colin Kaepernick not getting a job, the controversy that surrounds a backup quarterback – isn't appealing to all of the teams. Had they gotten together and like colluded and said, we will not hire Colin Kaepernick, that's illegal. Right. right. If the owners have a meeting and they say nobody hire Colin Kaepernick, that's right. why he's going to court. But if you're an individual franchise, in the same way that he has the freedom to exercise his right to protest, you as a business have the right to say, I think that this guy comes with a lot of baggage right. that I don't necessarily want with my backup quarterback. If he is the best quarterback in the NFL, or he plays like he did in 2013, then... 
he's going to be on a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also think that he stands for something that's so great and that him protesting is so it's it, it I I do not have any problem with it. I love the national anthem and I'm the guy that stands up and I don't th- just take my hat off. I put my hat over my heart. Right. But it's also like I don't mind if somebody wants to protest it. Yeah. Like I'm going overseas in a couple weeks yeah. and like like th- to entertain troops who are currently in in a war and they're fighting for the fact that this guy's able to do something and, like that. And there are a lot of people in the service that actually applaud what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Sure. For for that reason yeah. that you said though. He's too. not protesting the military. No, he's not. He's protesting you know? police br- brutality. Correct. And that's and that's yeah. what and he's brought a lot of light to it, to be honest with you, by by doing it in a very controversial way. But do you guys think career wise this is the smartest thing he ever did? Uh, not for his football career. Yeah, but no, it, no it, just life, life he, career. Listen, in 20 years from now, he's going to be a guy, when he shows up to places, you're going to remember what he did and, and the stance that he took, for sure. 15 times more famous than he ever would have been. Maybe, yeah. yeah, totally. Oh, and, and it also, and look, 15 it, times as strong. Maybe, yeah, man. Pretty it's, damn good it, season. It also depends but on what... he's going to go do speeches all over the place. And it right. depends on what right. happens. We don't know what's going to happen with, in a good or a bad with, with, with leadership in general. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's move on, too, because there's... Other thing so that the I answer saw. is five guys. Five guys is the best burger. I don't, fries? Not, I don't really like it. Five Real quick story. Get really the like Cajun it. seasoning on the fries. Now we have very, very ta- different taste You'll buds. Me later. Real quick story. I had five guys on Friday. It yeah. was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't Painful. too psyched about it. But as I was walking out, there was a guy sitting at a table by himself with an in and out shirt on eating five guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty funny. It's pretty was funny. he boy yeah. guy? No, I don't know. She took he a picture. Was the boy guy? He probably was a boy guy. Oh, um, and then he burned the, his shirt. The other dopey thing that I saw, though, there were two dopey things. The one to start with is um, I uh, that that movie that came out with uh, that they showed. I guess one of the festivals already. The first man, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Ryan Gosling. Oh, everybody's like, tweeting about that shit. About your buddy, uh, uh, Mr. Neil Armstrong. Yeah. yeah. You met Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin. I mean, Buzz, Buzz Aldrin. Holy yeah. Shit. So so who's who plays Buzz Aldrin in the movie? Do we see? I th- is, so who's who's Gosling? Is he Gosling's, Gosling's Neil Armstrong? Armstrong. Gosling's yeah. Armstrong. I'm not sure, but anyway, so. This I woman, cops are bring up that bring up that article. So this article, I saw Corey Stoll, I think, plays uh, Buzz. Corey Stoll, I think, plays Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, but this woman, this woman writes this article, right? And it says that you know, First Man is the most unpatriotic uh, <laughs> movie ever, or, or, or is it not uh, against America, or whatever? Too, and I, and so I'm reading this. Her stance is the fact that they don't show the American flag being put into the moon mm-hmm. at the end of the movie, and. So I'm reading this whole thing, and I'm like, so I wrote back to her. I said, like, "But how was the movie? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's like at what at what point did she she had to watch this whole movie to understand that, right? How did you feel about the movie leading up to it? Because not not once in this article does does this woman say the acting wasn't that great. I don't like what Damien did. And she's, this is she's a film critic. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck she yeah, is. But if she's, she's not, not reviewing time. a movie, then she doesn't have to tell you. She how the said movie First was. Man is a disgrace to patriotic Americans. Americans, but there's nothing. It's just analysis and opinion. Okay, it's an analysis. But anyway, point is, she the, the, what she was wor- she they don't show the American flag. And apparently, they they do. But she said because it was an American uh, accomplishment, which it was. But also, what was the main quote? One small step for man, one giant step for mankind. Right? One giant oh, leap, leap yeah. for mankind. Yeah. There was a and leap. Don't leap. Get, don't Sorry. Take that God damn it, Neil! Yeah. Get back uh, on the ship. For ma- get back right. out for mankind. It was about mankind. That's what the movie is about. So just, I just feel like people just want to bitch about well, stuff. Well, here's the thing, though, is that back, and this is something that, again, like I talked to my parents about this. It's like it was a huge thing. The fact that 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 America got to the moon, be Russia allegedly yeah. first. And oh, stop it! The fact Are you that, that we, guy? The fact that we got oh, there. Oh, stop I've it! I've watched every and one of those space documentaries. Race, and Kennedy saying we want to go to the moon, we want to be the first one to put a man on the moon. That was a monster thing to be a country to plant your flag in there. But. I have not seen First Man, so I don't know if First Man is all about America trying to win the space race, right. and then the end of the movie doesn't show the flag, or is it about a very personal story about one guy right. being no, the first person to walk this, on the moon? This, so it's such a stupid argument that people are having yeah. who haven't even seen the movie. It just goes back to, the, that's the thing, it goes back to that conversation we were just having, though, too, that the, her article was not about her just being offended. She was looking for it because she figured Hollywood made a movie 
movie. That's what she said. And there was another left take on it. And she was just itching and waiting to see if the American flag was in there because that was what her whole article was going to be about. And it's just so stupid. It's she like, went to the movie to see the American flag yeah, she, and not to see the uh, the particular way she probably the, heard the about it. Wanted to, yeah. I don't, but she probably didn't even see the movie. And she probably just heard about it. And was like, oh, really? I got to write an article <laughs> about it. That, that it's, it's just like, that doesn't help anything. It just doesn't help anything. It's yeah. like, ask questions. Well, it's, it, it's an interesting conversation to have, I think, with that movie once I get to see it. Um, as far as the actual, mo- no, I think we, well, I'm like 85% sure we landed on the moon. But uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin is like, Buzz Aldrin will will fight you, Josh, yeah. if you say anything oh, yeah. otherwise. I've seen him do yeah. it. It's on, it's on, it's on the video. It's oh, on the yeah. internet. Yeah. Really? Hey, bring up, bring up uh, Buzz Aldrin punching someone in the face for saying the moon landing. <laughs> he's like, he, he's Rowdy Roddy Piper with JTE. That, that's that's great. who he is. Except, that's, except for real. For real. Yeah. How yeah. do you know him? I'm missing something. Okay, so I was at a um, like a family's friend's house this weekend in Santa Monica, and crazy enough, my uh, my sister in law's boyfriend is an aerospace engineering major at Cal Poly. So Buzz Aldrin shows up and he's on cloud nine. It'd be like if Bo Jackson showed up at this thing. And I'm like, oh my god, I can talk to Bo Jackson, right? right. Yeah. Here's the way, Buzz, uh, this is when he punched. Uh, this one I've never seen actually. Yeah, yeah, look, 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 Buzz, look, he's ready for some shit. Look, 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 he knows it. You tell him to get out of here. Yeah. We'll call the police. See, how many times Buzz has punched people in the head? Watch, watch this. Why don't you swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon? I, it doesn't, sir, wow. I don't have nothing to do this with this. Is, I mean, okay. What is wrong with this guy? <laughs> with this fucking Joey <laughs> Buttock Fuco hair? He's annoying. Look, he's yeah, really he's really annoying. annoying. Yeah, this is when he cracks him. This is in Beverly Hills. Is it? He cracks him right in the head. Yeah. I said, well, what do you go up to this guy for? Even if you think it's fake, what do you, what do you go up to him? What do you leave him alone? Okay, well, you can put on your shoulder. Don't be shy. Come on, pause. Give him a crack. I'm all right with this. This is getting yeah, out the oh, yeah. See, he goes right up to him. He deserves it, though. Yeah. At this point, yeah, get away from him, dude. He's told you four times. Boom! Right in the head. What a, a right. good shot. Good for you, Buzz. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Good shot. Good for you. We good. You deserve it. Yeah, that's what you wanted, too, you prick. He, he wanted to get hit, for yeah. sure. Yeah, right? he wanted it because now we probably sued him, too. But it's like, you. he asked you four times, yeah. please get away from me. Get this guy away from me. Get away from me. As and a human being. Yeah. Like, as a human being, four times. Times, please get away from crack me. in the head. And so he did he punch like, you in the face? He looked like I one of those people. idiots too. Like yeah. the whitewashed jeans, a fat shirt. He was looking big, for it. He, he was had the classic it. dad at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really smiled did. after he got hit. I fucking hate yeah. people. Yeah. 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 So what? Please take that for a sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> What, what was what, so you, you met him? You, had, you broke bread? Yeah. So he, he very interesting guy. He walked in like the uh, the guitarist of Le- Leonard yeah. Skinner. Yeah. You know these large American flag suspenders. He had like nine bracelets on each arm. Full beard. Just, wow. Like, and, he's, and he's still built. Yeah. Like he looks like you Jack don't want you don't want to get punched in the head. No. By yeah. I saw you through the picture and I wanted to write back out of respect for Buzz. I did, but I wanted to write back Mandelbaum. Mandelbaum. <laughs> he, Mandelbaum. He was very Mandelbaum. Yeah. Uh, and talked to the guy for two hours. Uh, two very, hours. Yeah, he sat there and talked to us. Wow! It was like a table full of people. It was like five or six people he's about probably a everything. Nice guy, when you're not asking, right? Him when you're not busting said, his yeah. balls about if he's on the moon or not. And I said, "Do you? How much do you hate the people that think you didn't walk on the moon?" And he's like, yeah, "You know, everybody thinking." And he just went off, and it was amazing. Yeah. He <laughs> was awesome. I mean, he had some choice words for as the, he should. How he, annoying would that be if you spent your that was your life like you did that, and then every person right. was like, "But did you?" And it's right. like you fucking. Saw Got, swear in the Bible. Swear yeah. in the Bible. It's like you know he should have taken the Bible and hit him over the head with it. So yeah, should have done it. Uh, it was pretty, but it was. <laughs> I like what he did. Actually, I, yeah. I, I, like, like, the right, I like the right. I like the right. But it's, yeah. yeah, don't mess with Buzz Aldrin because the no. dude can still. I mean, he can scrap. I, he is Mandelbaum. I'm telling you, I, I, he benches two twenty five. If you combine old man strength yeah. plus astronaut strength, yes. Plus Moon all dust. that 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 pent up, just like people first of all calling me number two because I, I wasn't Neil, Duty. and then also people saying like I didn't even land on the moon. Um, you know what's great is in uh, Transformers when he makes that cameo. It's so it's so oh, cheesy. Yeah, 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 what yeah, I, yeah. like because it's great seeing Buzz Aldrin, and then and then Buzz like goes up to Optimus Prime and he's like, "Thank you for you know whatever you're doing in this particular movie." And then Optimus Prime is like, "No, thank you, sir." Yeah, <laughs> it's just like Optimus. God, right. <laughs> He's right. uh, he, I, I will get. Buzz Aldrin was a cool effing dude. Yeah, I'm just what is he doing? Up. What does he do now? Like good, whatever right, the hell he wants. Whatever he wants to. Mm. He's yeah. in the Expendables. Yeah, but he cool. walked in, and the first thing I said to Amanda, I just leaned in her eyes, go, "Buzz's girlfriend." Woof. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. 
He's going to punch you in the jaw now. <laughs> All right, listen, when we get back, we get back from break. We're going to break here, too. We're actually going to cover some of the, some new movie news that's out there because we can get to really talk about that. But we will. We'll talk about that. And Dorian Parks, he watched a bunch of movies. What did he watch? We're oh, going to find out. Here Hashtag Collide Alive. Let's talk about it. Be nice to people. Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video Podcast Network. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still Pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway because we love movies around here. It's myself and an ex expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day, and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time, and we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. 
The title says it all. Every week I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows. And it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Day himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, only on Collider Video. Uh. And we're back. I don't know if we were back there for a second or not, but we're back. I like the Braveheart. I like the Braveheart music. I wonder if the kid actually finished Braveheart. I know you started it, but I don't know if you finished it. Talk about Dorian Parks. It's Collider Live here. A lot of good stuff happening. We just talked a uh, nice little conversation here, Mark Ellis. Yeah, uh, you excited about that Outlaw King movie, the Netflix movie? Which one's that? It's about Robert the Bruce. Oh, it's like oh, his that, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Pine that. is uh, in it. Comes out on Netflix uh, September twenty eighth, I believe. But uh, the same actor. Hoping to see no, it. Right? it. No, Chris, Chris Pine. Pine I was playing Robert Bruce, the Bruce. Yes. Oh, I didn't know. Maybe Chris Fun Pine fact, could have been in Chris the movie. Chris Pine was not in Braveheart. But he might have been in the... He probably could be in the movie. I will not have else. trouble handling you in the Schmodown later on. That's fine. On Patreon. All right, take it easy. We uh, There's a lot that we I wanted to talk to you guys about. <laughs> Who played yeah. Robert the Bruce in Braveheart? Chris, Chris Pine. Pine. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well... Captain Kirk! You talk your shit now, but uh, me and you are going to scrap... This month, I so know. Ellis and I are going head to head for the first time ever on the Schmodown. Really? And yeah, it's exclusive for patrons. You got to go. Uh, it's weird we never even went head to head like back in the day. Like, That's like, when we wild. Lost, I, know. Yeah. I still think you guys should do the boxing match, though. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would never be able to punch. Him. I was uh, I, after the. Yes, the, you would. After no, the. I wouldn't. After the Atlanta show. Um, I do like a Q and A afterwards at the theater, you know, and, and I'm on stage. Somebody asked me about the boxing match, and and about I was us? like, yeah, and I, it was a packed house. And I was like, oh, okay, let's just do a a sample. And keep in mind, before that, I had given away one uh, hundred dollar movie gift card to like just like a random fan. <laughs> right. So I, I gave that to somebody, right? And then I and then I said, okay, well, let's just do a poll. How many people here between Harloff and I in a boxing match? How many people think Harloff would win? And everybody clapped. And then I said, <laughs> how many people think I'd win? One guy clapped. <laughs> the same guy who I just gave a hundred dollar gift card to. So I'm like, I gotta buy my support here. I understand. Yeah. Well, well, look, it was probably a silly and a stupid thing altogether. So it, looking that's forward what, to it. Yeah. El Portal Theater. Ellis oh. versus Harloff. It is. Personal vendetta Uh-oh. against Bobby Finstock. Uh oh. No. Bobby Finstock. No. Uh, he's new? in like Croatia. Bobby Finstock. He's in Croatia. No. What's gonna there's no way. Bobby Finstock. The door is closed. No. The door's gonna open. Where? I heard he bought Where it wait? Oh, what's that? Uh, Look at this. Finstock uh, is here. That's unbelievable. Here. Finstock makes his first first appearance. No. On Collider Live. Where were you? What were you doing? Were you massaging oh, Roxy's feet? My feet, yeah. It oh, there weird. he is. It it's, was weird. He, he's back. Finstock is back. Hello, Finstock. How are you? <laughs> this isn't the view. No, it, this, is not, this is not the view. You didn't get the memo to wear a skirt today? Or? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Right, Tom, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tom what did we talk about? What did we talk sorry, about? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was right. just happy and that I was in boots and not like flip-flops. Let me tell you something. Right, uh, yeah, you, I've been what, gone for a long time. It's, uh, it's happy to see you guys. Yeah, all right. See some pictures of me. I was in Europe for a long time. Yeah. Um, you really were. Yeah, I was. Look at this idiot tweet. Go back to that, what you just had there. I'm starting to think Anybody in Rome and Italy want to do me a favor, there's money involved. DM me. That is the shadiest tweet I've ever seen in my life. What, <laughs> was. what, what was that? Uh, somehow a computer got left in uh, the Rome airport. You left your computer. I didn't leave mine. Okay, somebody, somebody else got left. Somebody in there. left. So, so you needed somebody in Italy to come pick it up for you. Did they do it? Yes. You got them. You got someone to actually do it. Absolutely, I did. How much did you pay them? They did it for free. He says money is involved. You lied. That's that's not a lie. I mean, you just, I, but did they, they just didn't want to take it. They were like, you know what? This is. I'm so happy that this is. I'm doing this for you because it was you. Yes, correct. Right. Did you meet a lot of fans in Europe? I did. Did you? I did. Is that why you did the, the DM me? Did you like, were you the knight in shining armor? Because you're like, hey, somebody lost their computer. I have a huge social media following, a mm-hmm. lot of fans. Let me step up and save the day. That's correct. Is that how you ended up getting the computer back? Yeah, it was actually Tony Kukoc's computer from the, <laughs> the Bulls. That's definitely not true. Yeah. Starting to think. Whose who's, who's yeah, was it really? Uh, Luke Longley. You don't want to say. Yeah, I can't say. Okay, fine. Um, so what is this thing that Roxy tells me you're supposed to buy a town? No, is this true or he, false? He well, told me this. 
He told me we had a conversation at the last live event. Yeah. When we were downstairs for like 45 minutes. He talked to me about buying a town in Europe. And then he was going to Europe for the purpose of doing this. It was a legitimate 45 minute conversation. And there are multiple witnesses. Mark Andreco was there. He heard the conversation. And so I told everybody right. that he was buying a city or a town. And you know, in let Europe. me ask you a question. How long have you known this person? <laughs> yeah. Maybe six years. And how many times has he told the truth? Not as many times as I would like, but, I, but he said he knew all the shit about it. Well, like that's he knew, true. But you're he knew aware how much it when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're allowed to just turn around and leave. leave. Yeah, like Irish <laughs> goodbye. I, I, yes. oh, yeah. I'm this, not good at that. It's yeah. the truth. All right. well, so, so what, what I'm is starting this? something called the Finstock Group. It's a it's a startup company. Okay, I already got Bono involved. Okay, that's not the Bono you think. Chaz Bono. Chaz Bono. Yeah, okay. he's right. involved. Okay, or she's involved. Somebody's involved. Okay. in the Bono family. Perfect. You're a buffoon. Um, <laughs> well, I have this one idea that I'm working on. It's re-engineering the sociopathic gene. Okay. Uh -huh. So what happens is sociopaths have a lot of good qualities. Charisma. They're charming. You're describing yourself. They're the best in the room sometimes. Right. The smartest guys. But they also have like that, you know, rape, killing, stalking, and hate mongering right. thing. So what we're trying to do with the Finstock group that thing. That is re-engineer yeah. yeah. the sociopathic gene. Take out the bad stuff and mm -hmm. leave in the good. Okay. Almost like you know how these these doctors are doing the uh, the measles and reengineering the measles virus to cure cancer. That's what I'm going to do with the Finstock Group. Okay. Um, so I've seen nothing's changed with you. You're still an imbecile. Well, look. I mean, if we could eradicate the moron gene, you wouldn't be around. Wait. Right. So <laughs> just for clarification, Christian, you remember how before we were talking about when you do junkets and, and people aren't listening to the answer? Yeah. Uh, did you hear definitely, what we were just talking about? No. In any way, shape, or form? No, he didn't. Wait, which one? Yeah, exactly. Um, is I was you, under the, is, too busy under the table. Is the purchase of the town <laughs> in Europe somehow related to the Finstock group? Like, is that where your home base is going to be located? Or yeah. is it going to be a, a United States-based endeavor? Can it's 390,000 euros. Wait, did you see that? Seven apartments. Did you see actually you put, you have a mask on, and yet you put the hood on your head. Well, yeah. I have to. <laughs> Why do you have to? Because it... Accentuates my shoulder blades. Perfect. You're an idiot. All right, listen. So you were here not for this moronic story. You were here for a couple of different reasons. You are going to talk movie news with us. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, and we are going to also talk about. Um, you're going to you're talking about lying, which is what you do very well. Um, you're going to tell a story, and we're going to have to pick out what the lies were inside of that story. I'm so fucked. What? You're not going to be able to tell. I can't tell anything. Right. right. I know nothing. All right. Well, we're going to find that out. About so me or about just life in general? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. All right. Let's Again, get... 45 minute conversation about <laughs> yeah. him buying a town. Yeah. Let's get into. I was invested. Let's. He's good at it. Don't say anything. Well, I'm going to. Yeah. This could I'm pretty well, sure somebody I mean, was like, if you give me thirty thousand dollars, you can be a partial mayor. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. Can I'm going to have a Finstock Museum, too. It's going to be a lot of clothes in there. Can we do a thing where uh, Roxy goes to the Scientology Center and takes a Scientology exam? Shit. And we like see how deep she gets into I'm it? Screwed. They won't let her in. They won't let her in. You don't think so? Why not? Because I know the guys at the door. They're like, no way. But you've gotten in before. <laughs> I've been there. I had a free breakfast. Where were you really? Uh... Some some cafe in Vermont. That's what I thought. All right, let's let's <laughs> get close. it. Let's close. let's get into some movie news. Riley is not here today. Uh, Copster is Copster. Some Where's stuff that, that happened. Don't worry about it. Uh, what happened, Copster? Tell me. All right, we're kicking off. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, the very first you. news story that broke out actually this morning is that uh, Daniel Craig is is going to star in a murder mystery called Knives Out, directed by the Last Jedi's director. Ryan Johnson. Yeah! This is no. This is interesting, though. This is an interesting story. Like, when is this? Then what was that? Because that was my. That was my. I hate the last Jedi. But but I, wait. But wait. So if because that, the question we covered it on Jedi Council last week is that he's still working on the trilogy, right? Yeah! Didn't it, didn't it, didn't it, <laughs> Stop it! You're poking the bear. I still hate people, and I love that movie. <laughs> All right, look. I hate everyone. Yeah, look, if you say things to bite. trigger me, it's going to happen. All right. Well, listen. Can I, <laughs> So, all right, the trail, the new trilogy, no, no. Oh, Jesus, is still happening. But the question is, if he has James Bond in it, right? It's another reason why, because we're pushing this thing back. When does when does this happen? When does this happen? You want definitely, 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 definitely. No, I just think it's funny, like how, like the fake hate I was giving right. Move to the mic, and then you and then you say Daniel Craig might be in the trilogy. Yeah, but no, I'm like, okay, well, it's no, but when but when is it? Is this movie even? Both like, guys have two pays. Great, guys. Craig is definitely going to knock out Bond before. Yeah, I think so. Shh. 
But now, Christian, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm listening and I hear you. But that's you. the question. The question is then: the, then this means are they definitely pushing back? the trilogy here for a little bit because when is this movie supposed to come out and if he's doing a trilogy for Lucasfilm when's he gonna have the time to do this well didn't didn't they say because like, like they they, they kind of sidelined a lot of projects that had been announced not necessarily from Lucasfilm's lips but from like reputable outlets saying oh the, there's a Boba Fett movie there's an Obi-Wan movie and, those are all, and then they said that there wasn't right so. and so now the only trilogy that I think Lucasfilm is concerned with is closing up shop on episode 9 and then doing the Benioff and Weiss whatever that is right. and then Favreau having a TV show I I, I, I don't think that, th- that Ryan Johnson is going to end up directing another Star Wars I movie I do I do. I, I think it is definitely going to happen I, I would like to see him do it because I, I am a huge fan one, of The Last what Jedi what do you think but, he's directing uh, it's a spin-off thing. It's nothing that we've ever seen before, but I think it's it's something he's been working on, and I think that they they are very high on him over there. Um, it doesn't matter what you know, how divisive the, the last Jedi might have been. They're, like, they're very high on him. But I, I'm looking at it in terms of like what is the future of Lucasfilm and who's going to be running it after Episode Nine? Because if you have a situation where Kathleen Kennedy says, "Okay, that's my swan song," yeah. and I step down, and somebody replaces her as the head of Lucasfilm. Is she the one that is like high on Ryan Johnson? Is it everybody I over think there? Every, I think that from what I've heard is that he's he gets Star Wars, even though again I know a lot of people. I feel like he gets it. I'd yeah, love to see what, I know, what else. What, he but this, I think that if he, I want to see what he what he gets outside of the original trilogy, where he doesn't have to pay attention to characters that people are so attached to, and yeah. what he can do outside. But that's is this a canon thing? I, again, I no, don't. no, just in general with with, with movies. He's, I don't know what he's going to do. We don't we don't know. But that's a moot point as far as like what's going to happen here, though, because this this movie he's doing here with, I actually think this is a smart move if he does this first. I think that this is something, if he does this movie with Daniel Craig, or it could actually be a disaster, too, because if it doesn't turn out good, uh, then, then, he's then he's in trouble. Looks like this movie might come out before Bond, actually, because they're still regrouping right. from Bond uh, losing Boyle. Yeah. The, the article says that he's going to make this before he directs the new trilogy. Well, that's right, which, which makes sense. you know. So that, then we're not don't expect to see that trilogy anytime soon. Um, I think you're probably right. I think you get episode nine, then you probably get a Benioff and Weiss movie first, and they'll probably announce that at Celebration. It's going to be very interesting yeah. what the next movie after episode nine right. that they that they do is. Because like, like, that's going to determine what they believe is the best course of action, because they, they were pretty hell-bent on making movies from wh- who everybody's familiar with. Right. Like Han Solo, even Rogue One, that was a very familiar story to Star Wars, was the Death Star. So now, do you try to go back to that well after episode nine and do an Obi-Wan movie? Or do you say, we're going to we're gonna completely do something yeah. that's totally different I in think a that's different the direction place of it. I think the direction of it is to take brand new characters, new things, and try to get away from the spinoffs and everything, too. I think that they're going to just close out with episode nine and move on. And we're going to move on as well. What's, uh, <laughs> what's next? Uh, we got Top Gun Maverick release date delayed a year. This, this movie always, it, it just continuously keeps getting pushed. It's not real. Who, who's it's not it? Real. Wait, just give it the mic Swerve. to the lunatic. It's not real. What do you mean it's not real? It's not going to happen in the movie. The movie's not going to happen at all. Yeah, they're just going to keep delaying it and delaying you think it so? and delaying it. I yeah. Isn't Doug Lyman on it? Doug? No, they, they, were, they were filming it. They, yeah. they, they have been filming right. it. Right. Why they, why they delay it? Um, I have no idea. I think That's it's good. probably script issues, is mm. what we surmised last week on Movie Talk, is that it's probably something with the script. They've added new talent very recently. Yeah, well, Miles Teller is in it. Glenn Powell. Or... Zach Efron. Yeah, the, the move is being made to allow the production time to create incredible flight sequences okay. so the film can be great. So it seems like it's a good thing. So it is going to happen. So yeah, Shut up, Tom. You take it back. You guys will see. You, so you think you, are, do you legit think it's not going to happen? I think it'll happen in like 2022. Okay, well, that far, that yeah. far away. I, yeah, I, I, it's supposed to come out next summer, and now it's going to come yeah. out 2020. I think that's probably more realistic. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer because I'm really excited about it, but yeah. you know. But will anybody? I mean, I guess you know. What's another year at this point? Because it's 1986 was the original. Can yeah, we're talking 32 years ago. Can everybody just yeah. be kind of patient sometimes when art takes longer than they want it to? No. That they're no. not working on, that they're not paying for, that they're not doing anything but it's to a create. Whole other year. But like, can everybody just chill? You're in the can mood. I like chill it. out. You're Listen, Roxy. Today. Nobody chills. Okay, yeah. we don't chill. This I am. Is, this is all world. I, I want. I want to get to the bottom of this. What? what? Sweet sit up. Did you? Man. Have, did you? Have, did you have a rough weekend? I guess so. What happened? I don't know. I'm in a mood. No, tell me what happened. I'm I want to know. Are you nervous about Vegas? No. I want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, but no. But what Don't is it? Hold on. I want. I want to find out. I want to get to the root of this. I drank the fart. 
You just drank the fart? Okay. Well, besides drinking the fart, what did you have? Was it, was it a rough weekend? I don't know. I don't know. I'm ha- you guys Paying know. Koi. Everybody knows in here I'm having uh, major uh, issues at home. So Oh. Not, I'm, having, you I'm having home issues. You don't want to talk about it. Well, I, I, there's nothing to talk about. I've been okay. having them for months, and it's just like... Is it, it like a plumbing yeah, situation? Yeah, and, and it's flooding everywhere. No, yeah. I, the man that everybody knows here that I've been dating for a long time, um, we are having issues. And it's wow. just like, it's driving me fucking up a wall. That's like, tough to do. I mean, you guys have been together so for a bit. It's so hard to live your life. It's hard because like when I, when you're acting, you know, you like turn off you and you right. go into a room and you perform as somebody else. But when you're hosting, like it's hard to not let it bleed into your conversations yeah. when you're just like. You do shows together? No, no, I'm not saying our conversations. I'm saying like my thoughts, oh, I see like what you're as saying. me when right, I'm sitting right, right. here. So like I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood this morning, and then right. I come in here, and then I hate everybody. But did you get into a fight um, this morning? No. Okay. I think that's part of what makes somebody a good broadcaster. No. I know. Is like is you bring you you bring your genuine mood, and you passion. don't necessarily turn it off just because it's time well, to do something. And part of that's based on what the show you're doing. Right. This is a more conversational show. Yeah. And it, you can bring. Your emotions to it. People who like work a nine to five in their office who are having love life or family issues or right. anything, they go into their fucking cubicle, which good for you guys. I'm I'm not mad at the cubicle, and they put on their headphones. Are you boycotting cubicles? And you put on your <laughs> and you put on yes, I'm boycotting sure. cubicles because whoever yeah. made them was a monster. Yeah. And they put in your headphones and you listen to music and you're in your own world and you don't have to like talk about right. things. And I love talking about things, but like you guys just run into the same circles and stuff. And oh god, yeah. it's just like well you live together right yeah we live oh, together I'll be, at, I'll be at your house on the 15th on a saturday so That's make sure you make sure you guys Why? clean it up what a little are you bit. doing over like there like going to a pigsty watching something are y'all okay. still neighbors uh no, no. unfortunately not, none of us are neighbors anymore which is really sad well, i was exiled i was exiled at a neighborhood right. well how do we get how do we get past this what do we do you just got to figure it out i don't know i don't know if we do like we oh, oh fuck yeah I, I really don't know we'll see you like, want to keep talking about it you want to move on we should probably move on i want to see how she feels i i this is your personal life, and I, unless you want to keep talking about it, I think we just... Well, that's why I'm asking. No, yeah. That's I, why I'm asking. I, if I ever have any updates to give you guys, then we'll definitely talk about it. But as of now, okay. like we're having issues. People have issues. I love them very much, and you're right. Like, it, yeah, we'll it's just, move, we'll it's move my on. personal life. Yeah. 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 Let's move what on. is going to sure. be the status of the relationship when Top Gun 2 comes out? <laughs> right. Uh, definitely, he will always choose Top Gun over me, for sure, and I'm okay with that. We're pulling for you, and we want everybody to be respectful. Roxy wants to talk about a personal exactly. life on a show she can. Doesn't mean she needs your advice or your bullshit interjection, much like she doesn't need it from any of us in this room. No, yeah. I, and you guys are my friends, and that's why like I, I do and I will, but like there's nothing... I, you guys know me. If there's something to say, I'd say it. Right. There's nothing to say. Well, that's what I we talked is... about, and when you... Again, when you start in the show, we all said there's things you want to talk about on the air you do if you don't you don't right. it's up to you you want to move on let's move you're on you're gonna go, go see Queen time. I am yeah. I am gonna go see Queen I used Queen. to do uh, 1960s jigsaw puzzles and I was dating this girl who was trying to get you know to do the puzzles with me and I told her I can't we can't do the puzzles together so what she would do is just go into the table and file my nails I, had, I, I broke up with her it was weird Good. I love that. All right. So we t- right, we talked about I, Top Gun. We talked about uh, he's Roxy's. He's so bizarre. Like yeah. more so now than ever. Ever. Yeah, he's gotten it. I think a lot of puzzle yes, yeah. purists would say that the 1960s are when puzzles kind of got all corporate. Yeah. This is what rich people do. Yeah. I was more of like a 1940s puzzle. That, that's when a puzzle, that's when a hot air balloon meant something. Right. You well, know? The puzzles in the 40s had a lot of chemicals in it. You're lucky you ain't sick. <laughs> All right. What's uh? So what is what's what's the next story here? Uh, this next one excites me a lot because I'm a big fan of the Daniels and Swiss Army Men. Michelle Yeoh and uh, Aquafina are in talks to reunite uh, for this new movie <sighs> called uh, oh, Easy. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Which okay. uh, tell me about it. The film is an interdimensional action movie that would uh, reunite the two from uh, Crazy Rich Asians, and uh, I'm pretty much on board anything the Daniels do at this point. Okay, so tell me what what. So I still, I know, I know Swiss Ar- Swiss Army Man. I have at home. Still have not watched oh, it yet. Boo. I know, I know. Don't boo me. I okay. want to watch it. It's not necessarily one. You may have to wait for Sadie to fall asleep. That's too, the problem because yeah. it's a movie that watch even people who end up really liking it, like me, 20 minutes in, you're like, what am I doing right right now? And then and then and then it picks up. I thought it was great i thought yeah. it ended up being great so yeah. i'm excited to see what they do didn't you see this. it with jte or you reviewed it with JTE? jte and i uh did go to the uh noho seven the mm-hmm. lamley great theater uh that i can highly recommend jt and i went together and then i think we went to go How play do you basketball say lamley? the i say lamley 
Is that how you're supposed to say it? I, th- there's an A and an E in there. Nobody, yeah. re- nobody really knows. Yeah. Shit. It's L A E M M L E. So what are you supposed to do? I don't know. Whoa. I think I've been doing it wrong for a long right. time. Why don't you just tell me the movie? Wow. Wow. So, cops, wow. so, when is, so when is this movie? Is it they just, they just announced it? When are they planning on shooting it? When are they, what are we doing with this movie? When does it come out? Yeah, uh, there's still not a whole lot of details okay. besides just that casting, but it is the next project they're working on. There's okay. no release date or anything like that. And don't forget, right. Mich- Michelle Yao, can, can, she was great in Crazy Rich Asians. She can kick a lot of ass. Yeah. She's. I mean, she's really good in uh, the Star Wars, the Star Trek show. She was in uh, Die Another Day, I believe. Oh. The, the, the CBS uh, All Access. Tomorrow Never Discovery? Dies. Discovery? All right. Well, yeah. listen, so now I, 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 I do want to say reunite, though. Like, the, reunite, because oh, it's been Christina. so long. It's been so long. But yeah. I want to move on to, to Finstock here, and I want to talk about, let's let's see your two try. let's see your, your, your story here. Now, listen, this is going to be either the, many times you do this, this is going to be the last time, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because when we used to do this on Schmoes, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to ask him to do this, and he would put together the story, mm-hmm. and I said, well, this is what I want you to do. I want to tell you, tell the story. Then we're gonna tell. We're gonna find out which ones are the lies inside. We're gonna guess which one the lies. At the very end, you're gonna reveal it. It's like two truths and a lie. Yes, I and was he, on an episode where we did yeah. this, and he never followed the fucking rules. Yes, of the story. I did. I used no, to tell you the stories. They were fantastic. No. You to, uh, that's not Stanley Kubrick. That's not. Was, uh, that's not Simon like, they would all was, be just, lies. Not the point of it. The point is to tell. He's like, well, s- some of that's partially true. Uh, no, it was yeah, brilliant. I need some. It wasn't brilliant. And we need concrete facts, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So what I'm JT saying is, it. if it comes out, if we tell the tell the story, and there's not some truths in there, that we find out what they were, you're never doing this bit ever again. And so, okay. Ooh. All right. So let's. So, all right. Here's it's the music. Good, here's the new music. All right. Here's the music. Tell you a story. Here's your music. Telling it over the music. Yeah. Do that for. Well, yeah. they're gonna lower the volume as you so, start um, actually talking. Oh yeah, that's how they do it. Here we days. go. Okay. So every day the movie is back to school. The 1986 classic okay. with Rodney Dangerfield. And Fantastic Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and Keith Gordon and Kurt Vonnegut and Sari, uh, what's her name? I don't Sally know. Sally Kellerman. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Sam Kennison. This being said, Rodney, they all got to you the- You looking uni- up somebody? They all got to the University of Wisconsin where they were shooting it. Okay. Now, Rodney and uh, Downey Jr., who was working on Saturday Night Live at the time, was flying back and forth, you know. They were into the, you know, some... Stuff. Drugs. Powder. Yeah. Both. A lot of things. Subtle. So Rodney was a, a professional on set, but he was doing a lot of the casting, okay? But every morning, he'd do it in the sauna. Okay. He would ca- he would, they would cast, cast in the, in the sauna. sauna. Yes. Okay. Cast or do blow in the sauna? Yes, correct. So they... Uh, well, <laughs> you know, said correct. Well, what he was doing... Definitely, definitely. What he was doing in the sauna mm-hmm. was detoxing his lungs... Okay. From weed and whatever else he was doing. Okay. Okay. So him and Devil's Robert Downey Jr. was like, what's this doing for you? He's like, oh, clears your lungs out, you know, become funnier, you know. So they're in there. He, uh, Bob Saget comes into the sauna. Okay. And they run lines because Sin- Kinison wasn't uh, hired yet. And, uh, you know, Rodney's always been good to like fellow comedians and things like that. So Saget ran the whole line in the sauna. Okay. They were laughing. They said it was fantastic. He's like, I can't give it to you. Kinnison comes in the sauna the next day, knocks it out of the park, gives him the role, obviously. He gets it in the sauna. In the sauna, he gave him the role. All right. Then uh, Keith Gordon was in there, and he's like, we should get Kurt Vonnegut to do something. And he's like, and Ronnie Dangerfield's like, sure. So they call Vonnegut into the sauna, gets the part of Kurt Vonnegut, and they write him into the script. But Keith Gordon wanted him there because he wanted to direct a, a book that uh, Vonnegut wrote. Okay. And sure enough, he was able to do that 10 years later in 1996. That's okay. the story. So that that's was, the whole that's story? That's one story? That's it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the one story. That's the one story. So you just got to pick, you have to pick three things that are true out of that story. That's I, a, I, I heard a lot of truth in there. Yeah. Because uh, Dangerfield did do the young comedian specials, and Saget was one of the young comedians. I don't know if he was on the same season as Kinnison, so that's true. Uh, Rodney was big into the uh, the yeah, extracurricular go- Google activities. It. You Google something? No, I'm looking at the chat. Room. Um, and so oh, I see a lot of truth to that. So I'm going to say the Saget thing is true. Okay. Um, what about all the sauna stuff? You think the sauna? That sounds like a Finstock made up thing. No, the, no, I think the sauna stuff's true. Rodney loved bathrobes. He All right, so you're going to go with the sauna? I think sauna's true. Okay, you think sauna's true. And I think that they did shoot at the University of Wisconsin. All right. I'm also going to go with Wisconsin, which I think is true. I don't think the Saget thing's true. I do think the sauna thing is true. Yeah. And I will say that Vonnegut thing is true. 
Wait, wait. Do we all believe that Vonnegut that that uh, Keith Gordon wanted to direct a movie based on Vonnegut? Yeah. I don't think that's true. Yeah, that, based that, on the book. Or, based yeah, on, based, based on, on the book. Yeah. That's how. That's what I'm going with. What do you say, Makuga? Give him the mic. I don't think Wisconsin's true. Okay. What do you think's true? Uh, I don't think. I think what's true is that the Vonnegut stuff is true, and I think that the Keith Gordon meeting Vonnegut to direct the book. Okay. Is true. All right, Roxy. Yeah, I agree with those. The, the sauna. The do you, do you yes. think the sauna thing is the, true? The Kruger? sauna is you definitely do. Okay. true. How do you feel about Saget? I think Saget might not be I true. I said Saget. No, I think Mark. So you're saying just to interject yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah. You're saying the sauna thing as a whole, or the just specific parts in the sauna? I think okay, the sauna so thing is true. The whole thing. That parts yeah, of think, the sauna okay. thing. I think are the not casting true. thing is sauna. I don't think Vonnegut yeah. came into the sauna. All the right. Sauna. What? I mean, the fans also make sure that they uh, they're, they're contributing here. So let's let's cue up some music. Some for people. Some a lot of people are saying that Robert Downey Jr. was not there. Oh, okay. Um, they're calling BS on the sauna. Um, the some whole people, sauna. The, the, that was a whole story, though. Yeah. Well, that's that's uh, what he does. So it's I wouldn't be surprised if that is bullshit. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So let's cue up some music here, Beardo. All right. Finstock, please tell us what is true and what is false. The University of Wisconsin is true. Nice. Okay, I got that. The reason why, yeah. it's the only school that Ronnie Dangerfield applied to and got into. Oh, that's great. And he was like, you <laughs> know what? Go. I'm going to go out. Let's go shoot this over in there. Because he pulled all the strings for this movie. He okay. was a big star at this point. All right, so he got yeah. that. What right? is that, the Badgers? Yeah. Yes, correct. All right, all right. Oh. so, so what else? Is, what, is, is the Bob Saget thing true or false? That is, he did audition, but not in the sauna. Mm. Was there no uh, sauna? He did audition for it, but no sauna. Was there no sauna? Was there a sauna? The sauna, yeah. Ronnie Dangerfield and Robert Downey Jr. would detox in the sauna before every set. The sauna was real. Okay, good. But they they never cast it in the sauna? He's like, well, Dangerfield was like, I got to clear my lungs from smoking all the weed. He's like, what's... And Downey Jr. was like, what's a sauna do for cocaine? (laughs) (laughs) But anyway. All right, so then, so... Okay, so so the, the false... What about Vonnegut? What about the Vonnegut stuff? He wasn't in the sauna either. Right. But it was Keith Gordon's intentions to do the book. To get him to do okay, the book. Okay, so I had that right. I feel like we have to tell these stories one, two, three. Like, there were so many parts of the story that I don't even know how to pick out. Well, I mean, we, we picked them out. I mean, I picked the sauna, which is correct. He did. He did. All right, I picked the. But the sauna was only kind of correct. I, I was wrong with Sagan. Well, that's yes. the whole thing because it was, it was a. You can't just say the sauna is true because there's a lot of stuff that happens in the sauna. Like, say, right. if we go the to a mall, I, mean, I would tell a story in a mall. It's the whole story about cast, the mall. Well, there was no casting session in the mall, in the, in the sauna. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But he did cast, oh. but he did. He did interview Bob Saget, but, but, and he but, felt he but, wasn't okay. really hard, he wasn't really so like good enough for really the thing. True. No, the sauna, the detox was true. That's true. Yeah, it was, but the, it was, the sauna but the the session was not true. That's correct. All right. Another great uh, quick Rodney Dangerfield story. Yeah. So he's meeting uh, at the studio at Warner Brothers, I think, for Caddyshack. Yeah. And he goes into the one of the head's offices, the executives, to talk about, to get pitched this. And, and he sits down, and there's like a script. He hasn't opened the script yet. First thing Rodney does, he sits down in his office pulls out a big line of blow snorts it and then he's like all right what are we talking about (laughs) that's what he does yeah all right so uh, that was don't do drugs decent story decent story uh work on it for the next here's the thing you 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 make a good point roxy Thank just, you so just much. to defend in, in the sense of, but you have to look at Finstock stories as like 70 30. Yeah. So, of those 70% mm-hmm. of the story, uh, do you know what I mean? It's like a, it's, it works so 60% of the time, 100% of the time. I can't believe I'm saying this, but um, I get it. I thought what, what this man did with this story today was, good. was magic. Yeah, and I'll it. tell you why. It's because we're not keeping score in like, this isn't a sport where right. it's like, oh, Christian won four to three, right, edging right. out Mark. It's just like a fun thing. Yeah, you just pick out something. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's mm-hmm. a random. I'm too competitive that's, for fun you know, things. That's a little embellished. Yeah, it was embellished. You, you know? just put some stuff in there. That's what you do. I mean, I could have got deeper into it because uh, they were all in the sauna one day and mm-hmm. they invited Sally, Sally, Sally Kellerman in there. Yeah. And they were all wearing Sally Kellerman wigs. I see. But the thing is, wigs Sally Kellerman wings? did wigs. 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 So they she did. doesn't have wings. I didn't know if it said like Sally on the wings. She's having a rough day. Oh, okay. I, I am having a fucking rough day. Rough yeah. weekend. Um, all right. So, so uh, the other thing is, appreciate so, it. Man, it was good. Let's talk about some awesome other movies. I want to. I want to. Dorian Parks has watched movies. You know, they know that some people were. They yeah. were, were giving him some some shit. The fact that he hadn't watched some stuff. We asked him. We took some. We were just curious on what he had seen and what he hadn't. And that's the thing. Dorian wants to watch 
a bunch of the uh, classic movies, but he didn't know which ones to watch, and we asked him, so we gave him an assignment. So he does want it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, 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 he was on assignment this weekend, and he, he, he tweeted out, he had already seen Upgrade, and he loved it, right? He saw that already, but he watched it again. And then he watched, uh, what was the other thing? Okay. And then, <laughs> that's Beardo hating Upgrade. And then oh. and then there was um, there was another movie, He oh, then it was Deadpool 2, which again, he's seen. So I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, are you going to watch the other movie? And then I just had a gif of Bruce Willis shooting on the, on the, t- the top of Nakatomi Plaza. Like, watch the movie. And apparently he did. So I'd like to get, uh, so Finstock, I might have to see, where can we put you? Oh, he is. Okay, great. So Dorian's in there right now. Dorian, and we got a camera in there on you guys? Yeah. Right, he, was watching, he was watching movies during the uh, draft. Okay, good. So, so, do, so I Dorian. Be in your guys yeah. league. All right, oh. so let me ask you question number one. Did you finish Braveheart? I did not finish. Braveheart Perfect. Yet. I'm okay. Sorry. Now, how about how about Die Hard? Did you finish Die Hard? I finished Die Hard. And I loved it. Yes. yes. It's a All big right. win. Best action big movie win. of all time. All right. So tell me what what that. what did you like about it? What what were you were you nervous going into it, thinking this is going to just be some old movie that nobody uh, is going to like except the people telling me to see this? Uh, yeah. At first, I was like, all right, let me just put on this old, you know. Not shitty movie, but old movie. And then right. I put it on, started watching it. I was like, all right, I'm sitting into it. I was a little baked, so like chilling. I was chilling. And then as soon as like the Good action you, started and the story started, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm liking this movie. And by the end of it, I, I want to say Roko, Roko's giving me crap, but it kind of reminded me of a Skyscraper with yeah. The Rock. But yeah. just like, you know, a better version. Better. Better, yeah, well, better. Excuse me, did the young man say baked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but the thing is, it, it is absolutely a good comparison. I don't know why he was giving you shit on it. Because yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, that's the, the movie you watched was the rated R version of what we wanted to see. And Skyscraper was the PG-13 version. And everything is always compared to Die Hard. Everything is compared to I think to Roke is giving him crap because, you know, like, I really want to really talk about Back to the Future, though. Wait, okay. hold on real quick, though. Yeah. Dorian, is yeah. Die Hard a Christmas movie? Um, no. Oh. He, sings, he sings. I think it is. Mm-hmm. All right, now I'm really nervous because he watched Back to the Future, and I love that right, movie. So, so here we no, go. No, Mark Absolutely. Ellis, I love Back to the Future. Yes. I watched, I watched the first one, and yes. I was like, all right, I might as well just go ahead and watch the second one. So I watched both of them. And so again, good. Roxy, I was baked when I watched it, Hell and yeah, when baby. I watched the second one, I was sitting there, and it took me a minute to realize. I was like, wait, this is going on at the same time as the first, yep. as the first movie. Did you like? Did you like the second one? Oh yeah, I, lo- I think I loved it more than the first wow. one. Wow! And, yeah. and then I started, wa- I started watching the third one. I was kind of oh, tired by then. I was like, okay. this, the third one wasn't keeping my attention as much as the other two, but I'm going to finish it. Oh, what kind of a man doesn't have a heart? I'll tell you what, uh, that if you listen, I'm guys, so if, happy. Yeah, I'm really too. Well, the Schmutter Rundown guys are losing their minds right now because Brad Gilmore and uh, Frank Janish love Back to the Future, so now they have a new and, yeah. and you can't I not. You're kind of a bad dude. If you don't like Back to the Future, yeah. that's, that's what I was worried about. So you're yeah. excited. So now, okay. So, you, so what's next? Yeah. So you like so Dorian, you like this uh, right now? These these assignments so far they've worked out for you. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna watch all of these and then go into the movie trivia schmode at the end of the year. Like, Perfect. It'll be like a fall project assignment or something. Like, something who's like your, that. So who's your favorite? Who's your favorite character in uh, in Back to the Future? Was it Marty or did you like Doc? No, probably Marty. Hold okay. on, I wrote down a note. I wrote okay. down a couple of notes. Good. See, See look, uh, look how excited he is yeah, about you know, it. I wrote, yeah, you know, awesome. I gave a full <laughs> review about it. Good. Uh, I Let's thought one it. thing was funny when he was like, sounds pretty heavy, and then Doc was like, eh, this has nothing to do with weight. That right. made me yeah. laugh hard as shit. <laughs> yeah. um, and then when uh, when they, when they that black guy slapped the hell out of uh, one of the dudes, when one, they put him in the trunk, and he smacked the hell out of him when he got out of it. Oh, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I thought it was cool that he invented the skateboard, I guess, technically, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gave him the idea for that. And Rock and and how the the scenes mirrored each other from the first one, to, and like when they were chasing him around, and then and the, when he was in the future, they kind of mirrored each other. From you know, he was like, "This kind of seems familiar." It's amazing to hear someone yeah, like I for really the first time it. seeing it. Like this is like this is this is what people and don't the realize. Star Wars Star Trek reference when he like tricked his dad into like shooting his shot for the first time. That was dope. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's what, amazing. What do you got, Vince? Like, you got something for him? Um, you know, Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. What I was thinking the other day, I woke up in a cold sweat. I was like, who came up with Go Johnny Go? Was it Marty or was it really Chuck Berry? Because if you really think about it, when Marty's sitting time back, he's the <laughs> one singing first. And he's like, hey, Marvin Berry, I got the sound for you. Yeah. Go so who it's your cousin. Who Marvin. did it first? Yeah. Who did it first? Oh, shit. And I also remember if Marty hadn't gone back and like gave the idea to the mayor to run for mayor, he wouldn't have never ran for mayor. And that would have never happened. So it was like... Yeah, see that that that's the thing is that look, I love Back to the Future. I love Back to the Future, and it is one of my uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It is top ten. It is some maybe 
It is some of the worst time travel. Take as caution far as, yeah. in your tone, Commander. As far as science goes, it is some of the worst time travel ever. But Arrival did time travel the best ever. I, no, I, I think crazy. time travel. Well, who, in, said, who said that? Who said I'm crazy? You crazy? Arrival. Yeah. In, in, as far as science, as far as science goes, I, I think the who science cares? in Back to the Future is I sound, agree, except yeah. for the fact that that Marty's mom and dad had to have sex at the exact same time to have one of the millions of sperm swimming through his dick to get out of there mm-hmm. to be Marty That's again, right. or else and right, and, right. and, and the same I mean, with, little, with the siblings. It's little things. The same thing like when he gets back it's to a comedy because because again again well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Dick. You it's can't gotta, you can't pull you all the way. You can't go through the. Oh, uh, it's got. <laughs> he's got to leave the dick. It's got to fly to you can't Vegas. Just swim as it were. in the dick. Yeah, well, it depends. It depends on a lot of things, yeah. uh, but you can't like you can't nitpick it because it, you, none of it makes sense. Because if he goes back to, he wouldn't go back to that exact moment with Doc when he's when he's when Doc gets shot. It wouldn't happen that way. It would have been completely different. There's different scenarios. This it's the it's the the sliding doors it, effect. It's you the know, it's like, uh, the, the butterfly movie. effect. Well, sl- now, yeah, yeah. in answer to Finstock's question, Johnny B. Good came out in 1958. Mm. So that means that yes, Marty did write it. Yes. I don't think it takes a lot away from Chuck Berry's legacy necessarily. Only mm. a little bit. Because Chuck Berry is an all-time great artist and he was already going to be a great star. But it didn't write it though because Mar- Marty Marty got it from Chuck Berry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but he went in right, back but in time Marty, before Marty would get credit for it from a historical point of right. view. But that's he, again, he that's why the writing time, credit. The time's so fucked. But, but he would only get credit for the people that were in the crowd at the under the seed. That's what I'm saying. Calvin Klein would, or yes. or as Roca says, "Fruit of the Loom." Do right. we still have Dorian? <laughs> What's that? Do no, we he still left. Have him? He, oh. he was so burned. He, his attention span is so short. Did he, he really leave? Away. Yeah, he left. That's he amazing. Yeah, he's gone. Did he? he, did, did he, legi- he just, uh, took off? <laughs> yeah, he took off. He's like, I don't I'm mind go smoke if, some weed right now, and he left. He had a job to do. He came in, he knocked it. it out of the park we by give anything else to my watch. I think he took that guy's wallet too. Nice. So you're saying the time travel and Back to the Future is not up to par? It's not that it's up to parts. It's that it, if you look at it, it does it. The time travel as or time in general is represented better in something like sliding I, doors or butterfly effect or sure. arrival. Can I tell you something? In, in if you if just as like a personal note for yeah. you going forward, if somebody's having a conversation about Back to the Future and you ever. Bring, bring up the that the time travel and arrival is better. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It is better. You so should be asked to leave. I don't the even state. think I disagree. It, I think it I agree is hundred percent better. It does. You're being Neil deGrasse Tyson right now. That's it, what you're. I'm just telling you. It, 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 it is. It is better. What's wrong with being Neil deGrasse Tyson? Can we stop talking about these stupid multiverses via time travel? Because that's <laughs> this is a multiverse for arrival. No, no. I'm saying you're like the time travel. They would have to do. The, just fucking enjoy. <laughs> There's two different conversations. I'm boycotting Back to the Future. There's now. two different conversations. The conversation, like I said in the beginning, is one of my favorite movies as a f- as a pure movie. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a when you're not nitpicking it. It's, it's a perfect amazing. film. Yeah, Huey I'm, Lewis and Doc and the Dory. We have so all, much fun. I'm just talking about science. Excuse me. I'm just talking about the science. Excuse me. I'm just talking about the science of it. Do you that's guys ever it. think about making a movie like this, but that way you can predict shit that's going to happen in the future so that like, in case anything lands, people will think that you were like a Jesus? Well, Back to the Future is written backwards. Well, the other you way. You mean Nostradamus? Yeah. More like Nostradamus? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, no, I don't ever think about that. I do. Look, you let's know? be honest. Good story. Humanity's got like three years. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, man. <laughs> Good story. <laughs> You're having a bad day. Uh, it's, it's not my finest Can you, hours. You should pull that clip from Splash Beard over with uh, Eugene Levy. What a week I'm having! <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even You know, Splash is a good movie, but if you want to talk about actual mermaid mermaids. culture. I know. <laughs> why a are, better movie. Right, yeah. Why didn't mermaids like get their th- groove back? I think about this all the time. This is a real thing I think about. When when we're talking about like vampire, you know, there's tons of vampire shows and then there was like werewolf shows. Like why yeah. are there not, why is there not a plethora of mermaid shows? So they tried that, that recently. Movie. They, oh yeah, they did. You're right, cops. With the, they were going to do Little Mermaid with Sofia Coppola well, and then the main one, right? Well, not only that, but there was a TV show. I'm blanking on Sirens. The name. Sirens. There yeah. you go. You hear the siren song. You know what? Can and you... it's mermaids killing people. Can you bring up that clip of the? I don't well, know. I don't know where that was. Well, there's there's some, t- I think it's twofold with mermaids and mermans. Yes, well, mermans. See if you find that there was something. There, there was like I don't know where it was, but there was mermaids. There was like so people said they got actual mermaid footage. Oh, right? that was uh, 
Where uh, was it? Impractical Jokers. No, 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 no
Sure. <gasps> when is that today, right? <gasps> no, I'm going on Monday. No, I'm going also. Yeah. I'll come. I'm going to uh, uh, hopefully get in to see it Thursday at uh, yeah. in Toronto. Yeah, I want to see mm. a Star is Born. Yeah. I'm hearing interesting hear, things about yeah, it. Yeah, I heard yeah. really good things, actually. The yeah. answer is, like, Beautiful Boy and uh, If Beale Street Could Talk were my my two and three or three and two. The number one answer and the only correct answer for that's fall movies. Halloween. Creed 2. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's Creed a good two. one. I'm, I'm Drago's kid. Yeah. Can I make a prediction right now? Sure. Do you want the mic? Andrew Dice Clay will be nominated for Best Supporting Actor for A Star Is Born. Yeah, well, we were talking to him he about trying to get... He is fantastic. You saw, you the, saw movie? the movie? I did a spot with those guys the other day, and I was talking to Dice. Okay. So well, you didn't see the movie? No. He's like that woman that wrote the thing doesn't on First Man. doesn't make a difference. I know what Dice can do. I, f- I feel as if it makes a slight difference. Dice is an underrated Dice actor. Dice was I very good We in, love uh, that show on uh, Showtime. In, yeah. in Blue Jasmine. What show? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Very good. What and show? And, uh, Dice. It's just called Dice. Uh-oh. Yeah, and he was also... Um, <laughs> and he was. What was the movie he was in? Casual Sex. Remember back yeah. in the day? Oh, he was also... And he was, and he was in... Uh, you can't share Makuga's mic anymore? That's why he close to you. Okay. And he was in... Uh, <laughs> uh, what's it? Not Family Ties. Uh, help me out. The one with... Uh, the, the, Growing Pants. Family Guy. Is it Growing Pains? It was Growing Pains. Yeah. Yeah, what? it was Growing Pains. Not Growing Pains. No, no, no. no. The one, facts, facts of Life. Not Facts of Life. No, it's not Facts of Life. Different, different Strokes. Different Strokes. Different Strokes. He was on Different, different Strokes. Different Strokes. So let me tell yeah. you a little different something strokes. about The Star is Born real quick. So yeah. Dice, Dice was telling a story. Uh, Here, just use this. Okay. So Dice was telling the story. Like, why? Because we were sitting here with uh, Bradley Cooper, Gaga, Dice, and uh, Sam Sam Jones. Mm-hmm. Right? Or Sam Elliott. Sam Jones from Flash Gordon? Him too. Yeah. So uh, Basketball Sam Jones. Elliott was great. He ca- he came in like carrying like a log. So was anyway. This in a sauna. So anyway, they were like, How did you get the role, Dice? He said that Bradley Cooper is the biggest Dice fan in the whole entire world. That's and awesome. he was like, I know Dice can play this part. So he calls up Dice. He's like, I want you to meet over here at the studio. Bradley Cooper did. Yeah. Yeah. They go, uh, he goes to the studio. Cooper's not there. It's just Gaga. And he's like, Hey, I'm here to hang. Uh, who am I here to see? Bradley Cooper. And they're like, He ain't coming here today. He wanted her, him to meet Gaga. And they were like best friends in like 45 minutes. He was like stroking her hair and crying. And then uh, they're like, Dice, you got the role. Because Cooper yeah. was like upstairs watching Plays her dad, the right? interaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty it's, amazing stuff. I, yeah, because they they reached out. We we're trying to get him on, the, on on this show, Dice, too, because they reached out about having, possibly having him on as guest to talk about it. So we're working on it. It's nothing locked in. I can take a shot if you want. Remember you when we were walking the street? I can take a shot. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Um, Remember anyway. when we were walking the street that day? And that Cadillac pulled up. Oh, yeah, it was like yeah. three in the morning, and we yeah. thought we were going to get killed. And then the, 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 I knew who it was. The window rolls I knew down. Who it was. And it was like <laughs> you guys thought it was I didn't know who it was. It was Eleanor. Yeah, yeah. Eleanor showed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she lived down the block from me at one point. Yeah, and but so it was like a gangster caddy. Yeah, I was, it was like we're dead. So Eleanor's a gangster. She's mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. All right, what's uh, what's next? All right, we got Ram on Twitter. He's saying he's asking. Uh, uh, best story about any of you guys being baked, or best movies to watch while baked. Mm. Baked being uh, smoke yeah, a little smoke. weed. I, I always tell the story. I mean, you know it. The one I've told it before on Schmoes. I'll tell it again here. It's the I was I had smoked with Rick Ingram at the Comedy Store, which I never did. I never, oh, I never, Jesus. I never went on stage and smoked, and I did it. And before I, your set. Yeah, before I said, I went up right after <laughs> Joe Rogan. I went up right after Joe Rogan did, and Rogan, you know, brings the heat, and it was it was packed, and you got he was doing like an hour and fifteen minutes, and you know, we have like a 15, 20 minute spot or whatever it was, fifteen minutes, whatever it was, and so I get up there, packed, and I am stoned on my face, and I need my wits about me, so I am, a, and I'm this one, so this this one guy gets up, he goes to the back, a black dude, right? He goes to the back, comes back and. Loud as can be, and so the comics from the OR, it's all these people are around you, like it's like a, it's it's they're sitting. If you kick your foot out, you're gonna kick one in the head. And so the guy comes back and he goes to loud as can be, everyone can hear. He goes, "How's this guy?" And <laughs> and, and his wife goes, "Eh, all right." And I just I just shut down, right? And then I'm like, "Huh?" Oh. And then and then so then the guy, I'm in the middle, I'm telling stuff, I'm stoned, I'm thinking in my head. You can't guy, call that guy out. Normally, okay, but one hundred percent, I can. And then, and then he, I would have some kind of retort, and we'd have make it make a bit. I was done. So then the guy goes in the middle. I, I had something, and I go, he says it again. He goes, "Tell a black joke, dog. Tell a black joke." And I go, "No." And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, why not?" I go, "Cause I don't want to." And, and then somebody screams out in the back, "Leave him alone!" <laughs> I was like, "That's it," and I'm out. And then Bobby Lee sees me, and I'm just like, "I'm out of here." And I go, "Never smoking again." He goes, "What's wrong, man?" He goes, "You look depressed." <laughs> and that was the last time I ever smoked weed on stage ever again. Uh, that was it. It's yeah, so yeah. I got. Uh, I tried at the comedy store a couple times. Never really took, uh, but it was a couple. Uh, it was a celebrity couple at the time, 
that was there yeah. after my set. I know set. the couple. Yeah. yeah. It came out. There's a picture of it somewhere online. And it was a really fun time. Yeah. I, uh, it was a good time. It's a I great only, story. I only smoke weed watching uh, older John Travolta movies like Urban Cowboy. He used to smoke a lot back in the day. I feel like yeah, you don't yeah. smoke at all anymore. Not anymore. He's, I, used to I only do it in the privacy of my own home. Oh, is that true? Uh, yeah, because I, I really can't function outside that much. I wonder if it's a Libra thing. It's the same thing. It what happens yeah. if you're stoned and you watch... Look who's talking. That's amazing. A great, yeah. great film. Staying Alive is one of the best in Saturday Night Fever. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then uh, Urban Cowboy uh, with Deborah Winger. I'm just so enamored by Deborah Winger. But none of these stories. This is just the stuff you like to do. Yeah, it's just not. What's he can't good, yeah, have yeah. a conversation. Right. What's a good stone yeah. story you'd tell, Roxy? Not you. Uh, Sounds uh, like you're done. <laughs> okay. Um, so I I probably smoke more weed than anybody in the room and really? uh, That's true. I would say so. I do a lot of cannabis content and I oh, love yeah. mm-hmm. cannabis. Sure. Uh, but I good am band. not good with e- I'm not good with edibles, like really not good. Uh, and I remember that one time in college we took a bun- you know like at the time you couldn't go to the store and get them you would bake them yourself. You had no idea how much weed was in what you were eating cuz it was like all spread out. So I ate way too much and we decided to walk to a frozen yogurt place. And by the time I got there, it like really hit me. And I, it was one of those places with all the toppings on the counter. And I got on top of the counter mm-hmm. and I just took a nice little nap in the top. Sleeping. Just got into the toppings. Wow. And wow. Uh, laid there, started eating them. Uh, they promptly asked me to leave. I refused because Did you get arrested? I didn't want to get out of the top. I'm going to take it back. You might be the most annoying uh, person. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was really annoying. My friend who was with me was mortified, carried me out of the topping thing, like oh, rolled man. How old me you? out. I was, I think I was 20. Last week. All yeah, right. last week. It, I was probably 20 years old, maybe 19. Okay. You got to change all the uh, toppings in that scenario, right? Yeah. 100%. You, you have to close the store. Yeah. She like just it. she just contaminated the, the yeah. entire thing. The dirty I, jeans. So I call it when you, when you poo bear Her something. Her shoes were in there. Right. When you're poo bearing something, like poo bear, and you... Yeah. And all that's right. what I was doing. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. All right. Yeah. yeah. McCooks? Yeah. Well, I, at my bachelor party, uh, one Mark Ellis uh, showed up, and we, we had bought a bong for the bachelor party. And Mark had never smoked out of a bong before. And no, so I had, but I needed assistance. Needed yeah. assistance. <laughs> and I still need assistance. Yeah. I agree with you. What's the assistance? And so he's got it's the like, bong. I don't know how like the science experiment Pulling works. it at the right time uh, and all okay. that. A lot of people, that's like very sense. common. It's very simple. It's like, where do I suck from? Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. So he's got the bong like this, and he's like, "It's not working." And my cousin goes, "Put your lips around it," and he put his whole mouth oh, over no. the bong. Oh. It was amazing. It looked like I was performing fellatio yeah. on the oh, bong. That's why you wanted the Lacroix. Yeah, to, for the to yeah. show the lips. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't even do it. I know. You're I such didn't. an innocent. Yeah, there's still oh, some in there. Back down. Yeah. Yeah. Woods. And you probably they probably floored you when you uh, probably oh, yeah. knocked your the shit out of you. No, I was but okay. Bong, really, bongs? Fuck yeah! I, yeah the edible, bongs the edible got me. The edible got me when I was at the. Bruce Springsteen concert, I right? Smoke and my the friend, boss, yeah, and if the my, real boss. My friend gave me uh, an edible, and I remember just sitting there, and it was like I got hit in the head with a bat out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like I was just sitting there, and like boom, and it just. Yeah. Boom. I won't do it. Oh, it's crazy! Only smoke yeah. from the the little whatever. Is it? I, yeah, that's it. I can't or a one hitter. You remember? Uh, you remember Mark Mealy? Yes, no? the joke machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he's, he's still around. He's still writing great jokes. Who is that? A comedian? Yeah. yeah. He just had this really funny joke. He reminded me of. He's like, I was at a, his like just jokes were, like very like quick like set up punchline. He was like, I was at a Bruce Springsteen concert and I turned next to me and it was Tony Danza and I was like, who's the boss? <laughs> <laughs> All his jokes uh, are like that. They're yeah, so funny. They're great. All right, let's do one more. What do you got, Copster? Well, speaking of comedians, Alex uh, Cavanis, if I'm saying that correctly, he says, who is the hardest comic you ever had to follow on stage? Um, I mean, I would probably say Rogan only because he, I, I've done it, I did it a few times at the comedy store, and the Stone one was the worst, and I actually liked to challenge myself afterwards, too, because he would do, he would do, like, sometimes an hour and 15, sometimes two hours, right? And, and I would go up, and I'd want to challenge myself every single time, because He's very high energy, like intense, and you got to be able to match that and also be able to, not everybody has to match that. I mean, there are other comedians that have a very different approach to follow him and still are able to do it masterfully. So I liked to challenge myself after he went up so I could do it. So I, he hardest, but also most rewarding. Yeah, Rogan's, Rogan's tough, um, not to lump them together, but Mencia's tough. 
for the same kind of reason, is that it's a very high energy, intense yeah. performance that probably just went on for an hour. Why do you then? say not to lump them together? Because he stole Carlos Mencia stole Joe Rogan's jokes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, um, oh, not just not just his. Not, not, not even his. Yeah, and and well, it's I'm like not a, in that world. Well, no, Sorry, but there's a, there's a video it that was, like Rogan. Well, yeah, Rogan challenged Mencia on stage yeah, at the yeah. comedy show in 2006. Called him out, yeah. Yeah, and it was like this big thing. And, wow. Um, yeah, Rogan's tough. Uh, Rick Ingram is really is yeah. is a fun challenge. Um, Dane's pretty tough, but uh, my. Like the, I think the hardest guy to follow, I had to do it three nights in a row, two at the comedy store, one at the improv was Rock, oh, when yeah. he was working Rock, on yeah. his uh, his first Oscars. Right, I remember that. So, I was in the studio. Yeah. I was in the audience for yeah, that yeah. one Wait, at the store. Is, are, yeah. are these hard because they're so good, or it's yeah. hard because? Well, there's both. Chris Rock is a little different. I mean, because obviously it's Chris Rock, but the other thing is too when you're when it's a normal night where these comedians, if people come to the comedy store, they're going to pay for a night of comedy, right? So they're going to see people that they don't know, but they're just going to give them give me. All right, I'm giving you the opportunity to make me laugh here. See, so, all right, I'm going to give you respect, and they do that, and they leave going, "Oh man, that Sebastian guy, that Mark Ellis guy, they were really funny if they don't know who they were, right?" Right? At the time, Sebastian, a lot more well-known now. But Chris Rock comes in, and right away, whether it's Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, who, or Dane Cook, whoever it is, they, they come in, and they get that applause right up the bat. They don't have to do shit Nothing. up top of the first like you know minute because their reputation precedes them. So th there you go. And then – so that right away is hard to follow. But then if it's a good set, especially practicing for an Oscar set – you know, then Mark. Here comes Mark Ellis. Well, I just saw Chris Rock practicing with the Oscars. What are you going to do? Literally, who the yeah. hell is this guy? The actual. I I was talking with this. Uh, funny enough, with uh, with Delia at the store a couple weeks ago. Like the all time hardest comics that we ever had to follow because Delia is tough to follow too. Well, you know, um, it's, it's funny for me. Caparulo. Yeah. It, we both agreed that Caparulo. When he was at the comedy store, there's nobody harder to follow than John like, Caparulo. Caparulo, I agree with Delia. I think is it's harder for me to say because he and I like I was doing stuff. With him and before him, like we used to do the ha ha together. So yeah, he, we we used to do gigs together like all of the time. So I would go up before him, he would go up after me. It was never a problem to follow him, and I don't know. And same same for him with me. We would go same together all the time. Now, to, you know, fast forward to today, the guy's a monster to where he's performing all the time. So who the fuck knows? Yeah. But what I'm saying, Caparulo, I agree with because Cap or Sebastian, if Sebastian's really on fire. Um, it's just Sebastian depends. gets close, but he's a different kind a different of kind. energy. Yeah, where Cap, it's just it's so quick and and his voice and the way that he hits jokes. Yeah, like he's pro he he probably has had the best sets I've ever seen at the comedy store. See, I would I would say you know? see Sebastian to me. I've seen the, the the actually the best set I've ever seen. That no one ever see the light of day. Jim Painter ever <laughs> Jim Painter so this guy legend comedy store legend yeah. dressed up so there was if you listen to the Howard Stern show there's a uh, woman the late Blue Iris who she's great like just like a 70 year old porn star right and mm -hmm. she and she um she would do comedy you know quotes um and Blue pa and James Painter did this whole dressed up thing as Blue Painter and he did these jokes, it, it, he, but he, no one saw it coming. He dressed up in this dress, went up in front of everybody. I had the audio on this little shitty recording to record <laughs> jokes onto, and I never heard. There's one joke he told, and I know it, but I just don't want, I won't say it on air now. But like uh, he, and it was so crass, and it was so the way he delivered in his voice. Caparillo, Sebastian, Steve Simone, Brett Ernst, Renazisi, everybody was just in stitches from this one joke. I timed him. Remember we, we listened to it? I think it was like 45 yeah, seconds to was, where like he, screaming laughter. Painter was the guy. He worked the door at the comedy store for a long time. I think he eventually did get made a paid regular when he started doing like Blue Painter and other stuff. That I wasn't as big a fan of just watching him go up and just right. like he was the, the comic that of all the comics I've ever seen – Every other comic at the comedy store that was there, when he goes on stage, you had to run in had to. and watch what he's because doing. He didn't even know what he was going to say. And I, and, like and Holtzman's like, like that. Yeah, Pepitone Holtzman, is a little bit like yeah. that. Yeah. Is it easy or hard to follow somebody who sucks? That's what I – I always found it really hard sometimes if the room was so hot. Because there was a couple like Rob Lindo's Skinny Sundays. And I, I will never – I'll never say the guy's name. But there was a comic that was on every show and because he produced it with Lindo. and He ate it. I mean, you would go into the warmest improv on a Sunday night, and you could do 15 minutes of decent comedy and destroy, and this guy would bring a room to a silence. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I think it's the same thing. I liked that challenge because it happened a lot. We used to perform at Room 5 
a lot. And like every, it was like three days a week we performed this place. And there were a lot of people that weren't that great that were going up there. So I, well, the way I always looked at it is, all right, they just brought it to a halt. So I got to look at it as if I'm starting the show now. Right. Yeah. And, and that's how I had always approach it. And then because and then if I could then set up the next comedian, okay, I got him back for you now. That was always the challenge for me. It's okay. The, they just killed the whole atmosphere. Now I'm going to set the atmosphere. Yeah. And it was fun. I think, I, I think younger comics, the first skill you learn is how to follow somebody that sucks because you're doing a lot of open mics yeah. and there's just not a lot of great, you know, yeah. comedy on a nightly basis. So you learn how to do that, how to like revive That's a room. But now when you when you're following more established comics that people have heard of and you don't know when you're going up on the lineup, like I really don't care either way. It's like it, it's a challenge either way and it's a fun test. So it's like if you're asking me which course I would rather play golf at, like I just want to play golf. Yeah, that's it. This reminds me of this conversation. We're not playing too. golf today, Josh. No, we're not. <laughs> but this, this how dare you tease me? This conversation actually reminds me too because I, I, I you know this. So Burt Kreischer, again, very funny comedian. Um, just had his special just came out on Netflix. It just came yeah. out on Netflix, and so Burt Kreischer always tells a story about me on every show that he's on all the time, right? So he and I, he was a Florida State guy, uh, yeah. and so Burt and I was doing stand up at, at this group. For a little bit, and that Pop Bellies was the name of this bar, mm-hmm. and so Bert was coming in to do stand up for the first time ever, and he was, and he had brought a whole bunch of his buddies and everything too, because he had that article that came out in, in Florida State, because he was who Van Wilder is the character yeah, 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 is based on. Yeah. Yes, so he then I saw him, and because and even comedians, there weren't even I would say professional comedians, but comedians are protective over having the best set or being the funniest one in the room, right? And so this group that I was with at the time, they weren't really talking about it. They figured that it was just like a, you know, a, it was a charity thing. Here's the guy that they, they did the, the this article on. And, and I was like, oh, the guy might be funny, you know? So I walked over to him, he was drinking. And I was like, dude, I, I can tell you right now, not a great idea to drink right before your set because <laughs> you, it'll, it, you're gonna we're gonna rely on it because the reason I said that my first because the first time or second time I ever did stand up in Tallahassee I got so hammered I fell off the stage <laughs> like I got so hammered because I was so is that energetic. a true story like you oh. legitimately fell off not not fell off because yeah not fell off because I was like stumbling like a like a, a drunk but I was I was very active animated and like I was so like didn't have everything about me so I went off the back of the thing but I still. Played it off like it was a bit. But Did I, that get you laughs? Uh, no, because it was in this weird restaurant, so it was just a very oh. bizarre situation. Anyway, so but anyway, but it was the, the point was it made me say I'm not doing no drinking is a bad idea to do this, and I had this conversation with him, and he tells the story all the time because he said he kept it with him and he did it. So the reason I bring this up is I also want because he keeps saying and I love Bert, but he's like he DMs me. He's like I want you on the show to tell the story. I was like let's do it, and I never hear from the guy. So <laughs> do me a favor. Like, just this one time I do want him to I do want you to do like the the celebrity thing. Tweet a celebrity. Tweet at Bert Kreischer and say either Bert, you come on Collider Live. Or Tell get me Christian you love this Netflix or, yeah, special. Some, it's very yes, funny. Yes, exactly. You love, story this, time. you love Netflix story time. And either it's secret come time. On, secret time. Secret time. Thank you. Either secrets uh, or stories. Tweet at him. Say <laughs> we want to. We want you to either be on Collider Live or have Harloff on your show. And let's get this thing done. Um, with that, that is today's episode of Collider Live. We will be back tomorrow. And I know we didn't have a show yesterday, but uh, Brett will be here tomorrow. I think Riley will be back. We'll figure out. You're not here tomorrow. I am flying to Canada. All right. Well, Roxy's not here. Canada. We're going to have Darina on tomorrow. Darina's coming in tomorrow. Oh, nice. So we're going to have her taking the Roxy seat while she's not here. And uh, you'll Who's be back. Darina? You're going to find out tomorrow, aren't you? Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So for the whole crew, it's Collider <laughs> Live. Make sure you hashtag Collider Live. Don't forget to leave a review. Go to Apple Podcasts. Go to Podcast One. Do all that. It helps the show. Peace out. And make sure you check out Afterthoughts on Friday. Peace out, Mother Fs.